We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you and hello. I'd like to welcome you to another series of encounters of verbal wit and brilliance, but uh, never mind, you can't win them all. Uh, instead, I'm going to introduce the teams on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And on my right and your left, unless you're sitting around the back of the set, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. And with uh, devastating logic, we start with the first game, which has the inspired title, It Has Been Said. It's concerned with quotations. I'm going to give each of you, uh, in turn, an impossibly obscure quotation, and I want you to identify its author and the circumstances under which it was said. We're going to start with Graham Garden. And your quotation, Graham, is, Such and so various are the tastes of man. Such and so various are the tastes of man. Was said by um, a popular uh, South Pacific Island chieftain, Gray Mker, <laughs> the galloping cannibal, <laughs> <laughs> who said, wait for it, such and so various are the tastes of man, <laughs> if prepared properly. <laughs> I'm assuming you don't expect a mark for that. Actually, the correct answer, Graham, is it's a quotation from Mark Akinside. So you were pretty, oh, pretty near. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy, yeah. yeah. Tim, your, your quotation, a fly that up and down himself doth shove. <laughs> Do you want that again? I hope not. Yes, uh, yes, please. Yes, please. A fly that up and down himself doth shove. <laughs> well, doth. Puts it in a century. Um, that's old. No. A fly that up and down itself. Oh, it's a translation. Oh, oh I didn't know you had those. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a translation from a Japanese, fiendish Japanese zip manufacturer. <laughs> it's uh, these new automatic zips. It's a bad translation. A fly that up and down himself doth shove. You can... Uh, <laughs> Particularly useful for wicket keepers with their gloves on. Uh, <laughs> in the tea interval after a long day's play, you know, uh, remote control fly. Is that. Yeah, well, actually, you get three marks for being absolutely right there. The Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> The Japanese uh, concerned was called Wordsworth, William Wordsworth. <laughs> Barry, your quotation coming up now. Yes. You have delighted us long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I accept that. Um, <laughs> you have delighted us long enough. That's an irate householder during a strike by the ETU. You have delighted us long <laughs> enough. <laughs> And her name was... Her Miss, name? Mrs... Uh, Mrs... Um, Jane... J Jane... Gus Gusket. Uh, 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 Jensen's Os receptor. <laughs> Mrs. Jane... Jane Volvo. Austin. No, no, Austin. Austin. That's right. Jane Austin. Yes. I was just about to say that. I had right. an that impediment from, to my hearing. That comes from Pride and Prejudice. Oh, of course it does, yes. Page 34. Yes. <laughs> Willie Rushton, here's a quotation for you. All is vulgar, all clumsy, all dull, all torpid inanity. All is vulgar, all clumsy, all dull, all torpid inanity. It's the inanity. It's a cheerful comment <laughs> of the editor of The Sun. Um, shortly after, if you'll pardon the phrase, he's put his paper to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and not, as you thought, a, a write-up for this programme. That, that was actually written by William Cobbett. God yeah. bless him. There you are. <laughs> we go on now, r- hurriedly, after those Ruddy quotations, to yard. the point where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme in order to give the teams time to think of silly names for people arriving at the BBC Ball. Oh, God. The BBC Ball. Next round is called Blues, and for this one, each team will give oh, the other Lord. a topic for a blues, which they must then improvise, accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. Graham and Barry, will you give to Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor a subject for a blues, please? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the subject for your blues this week is Mr. Thatcher. <laughs> the pretty one. Oh. <laughs> Starting words. Where did it go? Oh, I was Mr. Thatcher, and you know what that means. While she has Ted Heath on the carpet, I get down on us and cleans. And there's a note saying. Your supper's in the cat, dear. <laughs> and we're down to our last 20,000 tins of baked beans. I'm, I'm marking this one according to the response from the audience, and that ovation earns you 12 marks. <laughs> well... And uh, see if you can beat that now, Graham and Barry. I doubt it. For, for whom, Tim and Willie will give a subject, please. And the next subject is Reginald Maudling. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I woke up in the morning <laughs> And down the stairs I toddled I sat in my chair and over my breakfast I dawdled. <laughs> then apropos of nothing at all, my wife, who had been perusing some political comment in one of the heavy daily newspapers, turned me right off the top of her head. She said, Honey, <laughs> do you like Reginald Maudlin? And I said, I don't know. I've never Reginald Maudled. Oh. I have to tell you, listening at home, that I have no assistance here in keeping the score. I have to uh, do it myself, as well as uh, listening to the uh, teams and giving them the uh, uh, titles of the different games and so on. I have on my bit of paper here the number three. You can apply that to whichever team you fancy. And we go on to a... We go on to a game which is called A Right Pair. In this round, one team pretends to be a pair of something, pepper and salt or (laughs) pastor and pollux or whatever. They they give the other team a clue and the other team have ten questions to guess what they are. And our audience in the studio here will be shown a board with the answer on and a mystery voice will tell you at home. So, first of all, Tim and Willie are going to open this one. This is their pair. Tim and Willie's pair is me and my shadow. Me and my shadow. And it it has to be guessed within the incredibly short time of whatever I said just now by Graham (laughs) and Barry. So, Graham and Barry, you have as long as that to start your questioning now. Are they going to tell us anything about it? What's the definition, please? Um... It, it's animal. One of them's an, an, I'm an animal. <laughs> well, oh, yes. well, who am I, animal? And I would be uh, an abstract really with the thrill of it all, um, animal connections. But can we eat you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not would me, you can't, but you could nibble at him. <laughs> Are you literary in any way, you two? I am. 
Then well, he isn't. If you include the Eurovision Song Contest, but otherwise, no. I never fail to include the Eurovision Don't Song Contest. Don't include it. Yes, it's a misleading I'm greedy. <laughs> Ding You've and had dong. four questions. Um, have we ever seen you on television? Ah, uh, both of us, yes. Yes. Together. Yes. Usually. <laughs> Always, in fact. No, be fair, always. Are you the title of a programme as well? No. No. We are the title, shall we tell them? Ah, you said that. We are the title of a song. Yes. Ah, you are the title of a song. Mm -hmm. Should have told you that at the start. That doesn't count, that question. (laughs) You've only got three more questions. Could you give them another clue, because they're being a bit slow on us? Yes. uh, I am brilliant, sexy, (laughs) good-looking. We know, we know. (laughs) What's the game? Um, um... Are you masculine and feminine? Certainly not. <laughs> not you. Who's been talking? Not you. Uh, not you alone. You and Willie. I can Au give pair. you one more. One more That's question. No better. Please. Rose Murphy is not unassociated with us. Rose Murphy. Rose Murphy. Now, there's one for you, Barry. Now, that's one for the older yes, listeners. That takes you back. Hello, all. Um, um, your first judges. <laughs> Rose Murphy. And mm. the other clue is the Eurovision she, Song she. Contest. Um, Rose Murphy. Willie. These are not questions, Hump. These are just dribblings. Um, <laughs> that, uh, Rose, Rose Murphy. Murphy. When, when did she win the Eurovision Song Contest? <laughs> Before the war, as I remember. Yeah. Oh, I wish we had Rose Murphy. the Rose Murphy bit. <laughs> and dialed my baby's number. Tim. Got a... <laughs> me. <laughs> and my shadow. Oh, yes. Yes. Thanks. I got the wrong number. Yes, you score four marks for that, and uh, it's now your turn to be the pair and for, and for um, Tim and Willie to guess. So uh, you have ten questions now, starting now. And we are here to tell you... Lawrence has just been shown the answer on the board, and the mystery voice at home, if he hasn't already given it to you, we'll give it to you now. And Barry and Graham's pair is... Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. Judging by the lady in the third row, it's filthy. <laughs> well, we are both vegetable and mineral. You're both vegetable and mineral. Yes. Yeah. We are both each. We're both vegetable and mineral. Yes. Or, on the other hand, no, we aren't. Um, are you a gourmet's delight? No. Only a kinky gourmet. <laughs> Graham, are you a person? Not really. <laughs> that goes for me as well. well. Are you both the same? Uh, no, we are separate entities. I'm just as separate as he is. Yes. <laughs> as we told you, are you, a, what, are you a song or a... Are you a song? No. No. What are you? Come along. <laughs> <laughs> you don't trick us as easily as that. <laughs> I thought you might fall into that. Mm. <laughs> Worth a try. Worth One a short try. question. What are your names? <laughs> <laughs> Give them a clue, for heaven's sake. Give them a clue. Animal connections. And the noises. Are you a salt and battery? <laughs> no. No. Cow and gate. No. no. <laughs> no. Awfully warm. Awfully warm. <laughs> um, hot and cold. No. no. Uh, it's just as well the audience doesn't know, otherwise they might be shouting it out at you. <laughs> the audience, in fact, is enthralled by this cat and mouse game. <laughs> I'll get you at play Would time. you by <laughs> any chance be anything to do with the cat and what you find under the bed? <laughs> Tom and Jerry? <laughs> oh... <laughs> Well, you did... I'm going to protest at that. I yeah. think that you did shameless. have a bit of help. No, no, to be shameless fair, they, they did have a shameless. bit of help, so I can yes. only give them six. <laughs> <laughs> We're now going to make up an ad lib poem. Each team member oh. uh, gets a. Well, the teams get a, one of the members of one. Uh, the te- each. Me- the, the, <laughs> you somebody out there talker. gets an opening line from me, and from that they have to. Uh, carry on with the poem until I press the buzzer which you heard just now and then a member of the opposing team must take over and this goes on as I always say uh, if you recall from last time until the natural artistic conclusion is reached or until I get an uh, unfulfilled urge to press (laughs) a buzzer here's your line coming up now and I think we'll ask Barry Cryer Mm, 
oh, to, yeah. to continue this. I'm going to give you your first line now. Sir Geoffrey was a comely knight, but one thing he never mastered. <laughs> Sir Geoffrey was a comely knight, but one thing he never mastered was how to do do it yourself and how a wall be plastered or how to fix a fuse or how to mend a broken chair. So... Will you he built a suit of armour out of Rattle Welch's hair <coughs> hand knitted every bit of it upon his ancient loom as he sat there solitary saying, kindly leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> to whom he spoke, I'll have you know, was none other than his squire, who came from outside Godalming, a little place called Meyer. As you would guess to hear this name, the place was a trifle swampy. <laughs> <laughs> He supported Portsmouth, or as we call it, Pompey. Hey. Oh. <laughs> On a plate. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> he was a comely lad, this chap. <laughs> <laughs> With braces all of red. He had a great big sitting room. <laughs> and in it was a bed. A bed that had a mattress deep. <laughs> a mattress lush and full. <laughs> and in this room, Sir Geoffrey, he was, nay, he was wont to pull. <laughs> young maidens, <laughs> nubile and so fair, he brought them to this room. But Mother had always told them to say, kindly leave the womb. <laughs> <laughs> because he often plied them with rich food and wines so fine that once, <laughs> and this was only casually invited her to dine, he asked a girl up to his room and said, oh, by the way, I don't know if you fancy it to tumble in the hay. <laughs> she said, not now, but later, perhaps. <laughs> I might just stay a minute. What have I done? I might just stay a minute. <laughs> if this is your room, nay, nay, sire. I'm damn not staying in it. I'm going home to my mamma to tell her what has passed. <laughs> oh, that's the first time she was described as being fast. She set off so quick she was a blur. So Geoffrey said, hey, come back here. This really is not fur. <laughs> But she was gone, over the hills, never to come back more. I do not wish to carry on in case I become a bore. <laughs> well, that quite obviously is the end of that, and that brings this, the team's level... And we go on now to the game, which is loosely called a musical round. It's called Opera. And I want you to sing teams, as teams, a snatch of grand opera from a selected passage, accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. And uh, I'm going to give you your uh, subjects. We're going to start with uh, Tim and Willie now. And I've got here for you uh, an extract from a foreign holiday brochure. Introduction from Colin Sell, please. Thank you. 
or something. Uh, bedrooms have, all bedrooms have a balcony. Hot. And cold. Water. Take a third bed. Speak for yourself. <laughs> That's your problem. Nightclub. Poco Poco. Adjacent. Poco Poco. Ideal for children. Poco Poco. Sand pit. Poco Poco. Water shoes. Poco Poco. Showers. Poco Poco. Tennis. Poco Poco. All prices may be subject to a surcharge. Poco. Less, less, they cried. <laughs> Vantage, Russian and Brooke Taylor. <laughs> We go over to Barry and Graham now, and yours, uh, your libretto is an extract from a book on coarse fishing. Yes. Oh, oh. How to cook. To work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Type yeah, very yeah. close to the paper, I'm sorry. <laughs> How to hook <laughs> a maggot. <laughs> It is very important that your maggot wriggles <laughs> on the hook. <laughs> so care should be taken in the way that you impale it. You impale it. <laughs> Up your maggot. Look at the thick end. <laughs> you will see that there are two eyes. <laughs> that surprised you. <laughs> and between them, a small bump with a vent. A vent. <laughs> a vent. <laughs> and Lord Charles. The hook should be threaded through this vent. <laughs> so that the point is uncovered. Uncovered, you then see O V E R. Well, we've reached the point in the game where the score alters so dramatically through this round that it's not really much point in you giving, telling you <laughs> what it is now. So that uh, you realise this is the point in the programme where I, I ask you to give your announcements for the arrivals at the BBC Ball. Mr and Mrs C. Charter and their daughter B.B. <laughs> <laughs> Let your loins be loudly girded <laughs> for the Inuit theatres and their son, Sir Tim Inuit Theatre. <laughs> Mr. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Slide holes up in the doorway there. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, not another flaming party political broadcast. And their son, Gordon Bennett, not another flaming party political broadcast. <laughs> Mr. and... Please, silence. Throw back your heads and ready to cheer. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Ori and the hermaphrodite child, Jack Ann. Ori. Oh. Evacuate your younger children. For Mr. and Mrs. Britton and their sons, Brian F. Britton and the... Oh, Rhonda Britton Quins. 
an illegitimate son, master mind, and there is really friend, top old deform. <laughs> Daring to follow that, <laughs> and buried behind them, Mr. and Mrs. ITV for God's sake, <laughs> and their chum of Sherlock Holmes' son, Watson, ITV for God's sake. <laughs> and will you welcome, please? We will. We With will. a burst of apathy, Mr. and Mrs. New, and their children, Gloria New, Humphrey New, Fred New, Arbuthnot New, Jessica New, and little baby Jonathan New. And that is the end of the news. <laughs> <laughs> Parliaments, and there is really daughter Esther Diane Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wide and their son Nathan Wide. <laughs> he was about to come in at this end. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Python's Flying Circus and their son Andrew. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Swald. <laughs> and their daughter, Tamara. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Service will be resumed as soon as possible. And their daughter, the comely, oh, just look at her. Norma Service will be resumed as soon as possible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the point where I tell you the final scores. All the way from Israel. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hook at bedtime. And their grandson, Abe, hook at bedtime. <laughs> the Rome Americas and their completely intoxicated son, Leonard Rome America. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tin and their aggressive, nasty announcer son, news bully Tin. <laughs> At this point, let me tell you that we shall be back next week at the same time. <laughs> so from all of us to all of you, goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you. Thank you very much and hello. Welcome to the program which is as famous for its wit as Sheffield is for scuba diving. <laughs> if you're listening to this in stereo, let me tell you that over there are Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and over there are Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. They're going to play various tortuous games, which I shall mark with my customary random precision. First round this week is called, paradoxically, or perhaps prophetically, Last Episode. And this round, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. Colin Sell will play the theme music, and I shall award points, as I always do. Tim Brooke Taylor... You're going to be the first one, and I'm going to ask you to put the finishing line for all time to Cannon. Mr. Cannon, you're fired. <laughs> I've got Barry Cryer, your finishing line is for Tomorrow's World. Good evening. This is the first time we've had a laser beam in the studio. <laughs> Willie Rushton, here's your series for, for you to finish off in one line. Kojak. God, this boiled egg tastes revolting. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, Graham Garden, this one's right up your street. I'd like you to put the finishing line to It's a Knockout. Ah, oh, there we are, the uh, <laughs> Graham Garden. Uh, it's a little bit uh, different this week. I believe me, these lads can get up quite a bit of speed in these steamrollers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Here's where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the program, as you all know, in order to give the teams time to think of the silly names for people arriving at the school teacher's ball. School teacher's ball. And incidentally, those of you at home can join in this game by thinking up your own silly names to almost anything you like. And we go on to another round now, which is called Censored Songs. I'm going to ask each of you to sing a song, and during the song it'll be your task to censor by means of a buzzer any words which you consider will outrage public decency. And I'm going to give you the words of your song. Tim Brooke Taylor, if you'd like to have the words of your song. And your song is <laughs> full of potential. If I had a hammer... Between all of my brothers <laughs> All over this land I don't know about all over this land Anyway, Barry You take up your next song Which I've got here for you Barry's song is I Feel Pretty The pretty girl in that mirror there Who can that attractive girl be? Such a pretty face, such a pretty dress Such a pretty smile, such a pretty I feel pretty, oh so pretty I feel pretty and witty and bright And I pity any girl who isn't tonight <laughs> Oh, dear. Now, that puts your team slightly in the lead. And we go now to Willie Rushton. Here's your words, Willie, and there to the song, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. <laughs> Where's my buzzer? He groped. <clears throat> Stop groping, Willie. Here I stand with in hand. <laughs> Turn my to the wall If she's gone I can't go on feeling too Everywhere people stare each and every day I can see them laugh at me and I hear them say Hey you've got to hide your <laughs> Hey you've got to your love away. <laughs> <laughs> and Willie's put his team in the lead now. Now, Graham, to put your team in the lead again, here's your song. And yours is Singing in the Rain. I'm in the rain, yes, in the rain, what a glorious feeling, I'm again, I'm laughing at clouds, so up, up, up in my, and I'm ready for And having 
put your team in the lead. That means that your team's in the lead. And we go on to <laughs> round which we call sound charades. One team has to make noises, and the other team must guess what they mean. <laughs> Rather like yesterday in Parliament. The audience <laughs> selected... <laughs> The audience are let into the secret and can help, although it has to be said in all fairness if our experience of previous series is anything to go by, but they very rarely do. But they can help by applauding when they're getting warmer. That's not them, that's the teams. And doing the other thing when they're not. And that's not the teams, that's them. Right. Uh, Graham and Barry, you're going to do your charade first, and Tim and Willie have got to guess what it is. <laughs> Graham and Barry's charade is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And our audience here has been shown it on a board, and you at home should have heard it from the mystery voice, who incidentally will remain a mystery up to the end of and beyond the end of the series. Uh, Graham and Barry, is this a film book or what? A uh, book and a film. Now then, I suppose you realise that uh, this death certificate for the firing squad must be filled out in duplicate. <laughs> yes, I do. That's a very important bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of it. Four words. Duplicate. Duplicate two. What do you say? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now, yes, don't do. forget that, because it's terribly vital <laughs> to mislead you with. Four words. Book and a film. Uh, death certificate. Um, filled out in duplicate. Murder in the cathedral. <laughs> so near. So <laughs> near. <laughs> Two ways to die slowly. That's more than... No. Don't right. forget, yes, I do. I don't want to help you too much. <laughs> Death certificate. Death certificate. Double. Tr duplicate. Duplicate. Is that helpful, duplicate? Yes. Two? Yes. Two nights in the zombie. If the audience applauds now, it's not that, that they're getting warm, but they might get warm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Two. Two coins in a fountain. It's deflation. No. If uh, <laughs> death, death, dead, dead. No, I no, I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't bark too Corpse. much up that particular tree. A tree. Firing squad. Firing squad. Shot. Shot. Shot, Shot. Shot yeah. in the dark. Bang. No. Shot. Shot. Don't forget, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, I think that uh, bit of applause. If, if we wrote, you. if we wrote shot, the answer shot, on a piece no, of paper, shotty, no. shotty, bang, bang. <laughs> ah! <laughs> You're in league with the devil, sir. <laughs> uh, would you like to explain to them your yeah, you certificate? Yes, chitty. Chitty, chitty. After shotty, I, chitty. Yes, chitty. Chitty. After shotty, I didn't nice want to try it. I like yeah, bang, bang, we don't know quite how that fitted in. Tim and Willie, it's your turn to do a, a charade and the other two to guess. And uh, the audience here will be showing yours on the board now. <laughs> dirty, 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 definitely yes, dirty. dirty. <laughs> oh, well, she thinks so. Yes, right? yes. And Tim and Willie's charade is Royal Flash. Royal Flash. It's right. a book, film, or a what? So it's a book and a film, and it's two words. Mm. And we're doing both words in our little charade all at one, one time, we the think. Oh, <laughs> get you. <laughs> Aha, meine Liebchen, cop this. <laughs> oh, Albert, we are not amused. <laughs> Well, it's to do with William and Mary, it's so easy. Um, it's not William, Mary, Bob and Alice, no. <laughs> Victoria. I don't have a shot in the dark. If it's what I think it is, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> it is, in fact, Royal Flash. <laughs> It's graceful. Very good, very good. Graham and Barry, over to you again. We must hurry this along. We're getting near to the end of the week. Uh, <laughs> the audience is being shown yours, and the mystery voice is telling everybody at home. And this charade for Graham and Barry is 20 questions. 20 questions. That's not dirty or funny, that one, is it? <laughs> and what is yours? 
book or what? Oh, that's awfully good as a question. Um, um, yes, it's a radio show. It's it, 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 it's a program. Uh, <coughs> right. What is your name? How old are you? What is your favourite colour? What do you like for breakfast? Uh, what height are you? What weight are you? Are those your own legs? <laughs> what is the name of your favourite male vocalist? Who wrote Deflated Mouse? How high is Big Ben? How low is Monty Modlin? <laughs> How low can you get? <laughs> Who is Sylvia? What is she? Where was Rembrandt born? What are the dates of Queen Anne? Does your chewing gum lose its flavour on the bedpost overnight? <laughs> Where will the baby's dimple be? Why does my heart go boom? And what is the name of this programme? Due to sensible editing, it's 15 questions. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, very good. Tim and Willie, you've got one more to go. Three quarters right. <laughs> Audience is being shown Tim and Willie's now. And Tim and Willie's charade is port noise complaint. Port noise complaint. Book, film, play, what? It's a book, and there, was, there is a film as well, which is hard to believe, but there is. Um, two words, which we're going to do both at once. Shut up! We're trying to get some sleep down here! <laughs> they can see we're getting warm. <laughs> it's a book and there was a film, believe it or not. Yes. That's a good clue. Siren. Right, fog. Start getting. Sorry, Hum. Uh, um, yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? QE2 over Peckham. <laughs> Dangerously close. <laughs> yes. Uh, Fawn. Uh, 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 sleepers wake. Um, sleep disturbed. Si Rude neighbours. Uh, Siren's not in it, is it? No, no. Um, it was more of a... <laughs> drone. QE2 was close. Yeah, that's Liner. Close. It's a terrible pun, I tell you. Ship. Sheep. What isn't? Ship. Oh, ship. Ship. <laughs> Boat. Vessel. No. Where do you find um, Oh, dear. Boat. Uh, fog. No. <clears throat> Siren. Fog. What was I doing? You were shouting rather rudely, I thought, at Willie. Was <laughs> playing the game. It's two words. Yes. Is it? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. well, you're right there. Yes. Two words. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get it back for two if words, get, just if you can get the, you. If you can get the um, location, Barry, if you can get the location of that first sound, mm. then you're on the way. Do you want to do it again? Plymouth? Yeah, do it again. Well, don't be Harbour. so specific. Harbour is good. It's getting yes. nearer. Port. 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 Um, I died. Port. Port. Yes. Mm. Port. Shut up! Shut up! We're trying to get some sleep. I'm going to... Port uh... noise complaint. Uh... <laughs> oh. Well done, Barry. That'll sound quite bright when they've cut out half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember saying that. <laughs> we go on now to yeah. the, the game which is called Word for Word. In this round, you're going to have difficulty in believing this, but one of the members of a team says a word and his partner must say another word. Oh, sorry. Another word totally unconnected with the first, and so on. I shall give them the first word. The other team can challenge and try and prove a connection between the words. All right? We'll start with uh, Willie Rushton now, and will you start from the word faggot? <laughs> Newspaper. Dustbin. Microphone. Dog basket. Tooth. <laughs> There's a, there's a challenge from Graham Garden. Yeah, dog basket and tooth. There is, in fact, a basket tooth check used in suits, similar to dog tooth check. We surrender. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll by Alan Wicker. Do you want to challenge that challenge? No, we hoped you wouldn't notice that. I don't think there is a connection. Dead giveaway. No, it's... Dog basket and tooth, dog tooth. Hans tooth check or dog... Basket tooth. What we'll do, we'll, 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 we'll play a let. All right. <laughs> Barry, I'm going to give you a word now. Laurel. Theodolite. Artichoke. Boot. Prism. Parting. Confuse. Nose. 
Edna. Trivet. <laughs> Challenge from Willie Rushton. Well known, Edna is, for her amazing organ. Nostril, no, known, as, known as Edna. Edna. Edna, nosy Edna, they call her. Edna the nose. <laughs> Same nose in any pub around here. And I'll give you Edna. that. Edna, Edna, Edna. the one you're looking Edna. Edna. I'll give you that. I don't know why, but I'll give it to you. Yes. Uh, All right. Tim, will you start it off again now with Hardy? Toxoplasmosis. <laughs> Warthog. Brandy. Ketchup. Oh, Randy Ketchup. Challenge there from Barry. I didn't know we were allowed to mention trade names and brand names on this Very program. Very clever. Randy Ketchup. I mean, that is the... <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm embarrassed mentioning it. Randy Ketchup in every restaurant, you know. We put it on the table, have fun with your friends. Everybody knows this. <laughs> it's known. It's we known. didn't say Randy. What did you say? <laughs> Brandy. Oh, ho, ho. That's all right, Brandy. Yeah, that's all right. There is, that's ketchup. all right. Yes, right. Brandy. Thank Brandy. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank Tom you. Barry, as you've been talking for the last ten minutes, you might as well <laughs> carry on. Uh, Thatcher. Quilt. Pan. Boat. Blue. Seam. Round. Zip. Ammunition. <laughs> Furrow. Dart. Sky. Oh, him go on a bit, yeah. <laughs> Sadist. Uh, masochist. Oh, oh no, oh, no, no, no. Got you an old trick I learned in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> There's been we a have, lot of talk. As the score's now delicately poised, we'll have another round of that from... We're starting with uh, Willie Rushton. Will you start with Crumpet? <laughs> Pantaloon. <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> Lighter. Glasses. Clock. Railing. <laughs> Giraffe. Trumpeter. <laughs> Grotesquery. <laughs> Exit. <laughs> Shooting stick. Curtain. Cumulus. Audience. <laughs> Weatherman. Tooth. <laughs> Trouser press. Bucket. Eyelash. Soot. Elbow. Twinge. Geranium. Boat. Newspaper. Knicker elastic. <laughs> Chin. Fetish. Oh, that's very Chin difficult. fetish. <laughs> Need I say more? Chin um, fetish. Yes. Not in this company. Tommy I'll... Trinder, Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> I won't Pictures mention on the wall. names. I won't name these guilty <laughs> men, but... I'll accept it's that, a known thing. I'll accept that for no better reason than that I'm already in the middle of the next round. <laughs> <laughs> Which takes its uh, starting point from the poverty of the international film industry. For e economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. And I want to hear the resulting titles from you each in turn. And I'll award points for almost anything. <laughs> we'll start going? now with Tim Brooke Taylor. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, the international film industry is panicking and producing two blockbusters for the price of one. The Magnificent Seven and the Dirty Dozen are being re remade as the Magnificently Dirty Nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry. You will remember, of course, Humph, uh, Barefoot in the Park and the Elizabeth Taylor film, sadly underrated, Boom. Uh, these will be reissued combined as Bear Boom. <laughs> and I'll be back later on. <laughs> oh, no, one. you won't. <laughs> <laughs> right, Willie. Uh, they balked at Snow White and the Ten Commandments, but they thought <laughs> they could remake Lawrence of Arabia, mingle it with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and come up with the seven pillars of Norman wisdom. <laughs> Graham, or not. Graham Garden. Uh, yes, in triplicate now, adding a touch of gritty northern realism to the field of space westerns. They're going to combine a room at the top, Barbarella and Custer's Last Stand, and get rhubarb and Custer's. <laughs> Thank you.
I seem to have forgotten to award any marks for the last two or three rounds. <laughs> not so I've satisfied got an awful lot with to that. Spare. Have you got, not, has anybody got any not more? Not satisfied with that. They are also going to combine Emmanuel and Easy Rider to produce Emmanuel of motorcycle maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. There's a wonderful Australian drama coming up based on Hell is a City and the Incredible Shrinking Man. It's going to be called A Town Like Rolf Harris. <laughs> So there we are. Now, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the uh, pocket computer on which I keep the score has uh, succumbed to the fact that the teams have done so well this week by bursting into flames. <laughs> so we start from scratch at this point, which is where I uh, go home so that I can miss, if I'm lucky, your announcements of the arrivals at the school teachers' ball. Who's going to open? Because I'm going home anyway. Mr. and Mrs. Boys and their son, Boz will be boys. <laughs> boys. Boys. boys will. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Bus and their rather oblique daughter, Rom, and all the way from Liverpool, their singing daughter, Scylla Bus. <laughs> Rom Bus being a reference to an oblique angled <laughs> I shall fade away. Known as the school buses. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, please. Yes, certainly. A well-educated family, Mr. and Mrs. O. Levels, and their son, Fifo Levels. <laughs> please, will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Chair and their naughty son, who is a caned bottom chair. <laughs> Put on your rose-coloured glasses, please, and welcome Mr. and Mrs. Inners and their daughter, Frida Inners. Free dinners. Free dinners. Free dinners. Closely followed by Mr. and Mrs. Nometry and their horse Trigger Nometry. <laughs> you try. Mr. and Mrs. Bra and their son Algy <laughs> and his German grandma. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All the way from sunny Greece, Mr. and Mrs. Beta Gamma Delta at Silent Zeta Eta Theta. <coughs> and their son, Alfie Beta Gamma Delta at Silent Zeta Eta Theta. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Nastic display in the playground at three. <laughs> and their son, Jim Nastic display in the playground at three. Not to mention, I wish I had. Not to mention. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tation and their son, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Mattix <laughs> and their daughter Martha. <laughs> and who's this brushing their way through the bead curtain? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tron's a bit of a goer and their lovely daughter May Tron's a bit of a goer. <laughs> Based on research. Pray silence, please, for Mr. and Mrs. Holiday in aid of the Queen's... Not in aid, in support of the Queen's birthday. <laughs> oh, dear. And their son, Arthur Holiday. <laughs> From oh, the military yes. sector, will you line up in rank to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Education and their son, Private Education, <laughs> and his friend, Corporal Punishment. <laughs> and, of course, also from the military, Mr. and Mrs. Kate of Education... And their highly decorated cousin, General Sir Tiffy, Kate of Education. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, with Sid and Dorothy well in the lead. In the corner, sharing a joke with them, Mr and Mrs Demicles and their West Country clarinet playing son, Acker Demicles. <laughs> Sid and Dorothy, incidentally, Mr. ladies and gentlemen, who are the winners this week, are two people who, in response to my invitation, have been playing the games at home. <laughs> they should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> and all that remains for me to do now is to say we should be back again next week. So we'll see you then. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett.
we present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, and welcome to what tries to be an anal game. In other words, to take the P out of panel game. (laughs) That joke will give you some idea of what we're in for for the next eight weeks. The teams are, on my left, Barry Crown and Graham Garden. (laughs) And on my right, John Duncan and William Rushton. Well done. And uh, curbing my enthusiasm with iron self-control, let's launch us into our first game, which is called Word for Word. In this round, one of the members of a team says a word, and his partner must say another word totally unconnected with the first, and so on. And the opposing team may challenge and try to prove a connection. In fact, I shall give the teams the first word to start with. Graham Garden, I'm going to give you a word which you must bandy about with uh, Barry Cryer, and your word is crutch. Um, transport. Cauliflower. The crutch was a favourite mode of transport of Long John Silver, the parrot carrot. (laughs) (laughs) I'll allow that, Willie. I'll allow that one. I'm going to give John a word now. John, if you start off with Willie, gallop. Cheese. Toupee. Arthur. Silver. Bread. (laughs) Terrell ceiling. (laughs) That is his establishmentarianism. (laughs) Teeth. Floxinalkina hilipilification. Acne. Feet. Rubbish. <laughs> George. Genuflections. <laughs> Knife. Word. The. <laughs> Hereafter. Good Lord. <laughs> Further rubbish. <laughs> Knees. Nah, clock. Jim. Uh, Nostril. Piano. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse than my ashtray. Cigarette. Ashtray. I said ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> That's the chairman's buzzer there. I'm, I'm going to stop you on that one because already, before the game has hardly begun, that has put you score-wise in an unassailable position. Oh, marvellous. Thank you. And relax. the others can't catch up. Do you want to try one more then, Barry? I'm going to start one with you then. Will you start with the word bird? Umbrella. Rain. Oh! Sorry. Oh. Sorry about this buzz. I think they Sorry. spotted it, Graham. <laughs> they spotted Say it. Say nothing, Barry. Oh. They may not. There's been, a cha- there's been a challenge from Willie Rushton. Yes. I and I wonder what he's going to say. The umbrella and the rain do seem to fall together in a natural manner. <laughs> well, I don't get that, no. Now, oh, carry on. Very well. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I mentioned it. Carry on, uh, Barry. Rain, yes. Carry on with rain. Yes, Barry. Nose. Hyphen. Hi- Nose is a hyphenated word. Thank you. Quite right, right, yes. Well, I'll give you that. Thank you. So, <laughs> first game to an end with a score at Barry and Graham, 23, and Willie and John. Now, second game <laughs> comes to the point in the programme where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme in order to give the teams time to think of silly names for people arriving at the Fairyland Ball. Got that, teams? The Fairyland Ball. Playing with fire. While you're thinking about that, we'll go on to the next game, which is uh, simply called Blues, and this is a familiar one, all too familiar. For this round, each team will give the other the topic for a blues, which they must then improvise, accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano, and I shall award marks for wit, cleanliness and brevity, coupled with ethnic feel, which has been on my, <laughs> been on my script for four series, and I've never yet discovered what it is. Anyway, <laughs> Graham and Barry, will you give uh, John and Willie their topic for a blues, please? Um, we've decided the Dennis Healy blues. I woke up this morning and my pound wasn't worth a dime. (laughs) What Healy does to us Oh, it really is the most appalling crime. <laughs> Keep up, piano. Time heals all wounds, 
But, baby, I'm... Absolutely certain. Healy wounds all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll give you six marks out of, uh, out of uh, a possible... Uh, well, I'll give you six marks anyway for that. And uh, <laughs> it's your, uh, John and Willie, will you give Graham and Barry their uh, title? Yes. Holiday the, Camp Blues. Holiday Camp Blues. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Woke up this morning. <laughs> heard a voice shout, Heidi, hi. Heidi, hi. I said, I don't know where I am. Oh, me, oh, my. <laughs> me, oh, my. Me, oh, my. And a voice said, Butlin's camp. I said, oh, super, so am I. <laughs> Well, that uh, ovation from the audience puts you just in the lead, and we go on to right. the round, which is, uh, again, a familiar one. It's called Ad-Lib Poem. The teams are going to oh. make up a poem. Each team member must keep going until I press this buzzer. Oh. And then uh, a member of the opposing team must take over. And this goes on until the natural artistic conclusion is reached, or until none of us can stand it any longer. <laughs> I'm going to give you the first line of the poem, and I'm going to ask John Duncan to take it up from me. Uh, John, ready? Uh, yes. My lady fair once showed to me a lovely pair of pistols. <laughs> Go on, son, go on. Being a devout coward and thick to boot, I shall go straight for the obvious. <coughs> My lady fair once showed to me a lovely pair of pistols. She go. strapped them high <laughs> upon her back in a holster made by Bristol. <laughs> a firm of holster makers known throughout this countryside... A firm of reputation that is known both far and wide. A firm of many products, they, holsters and of boots. In fact, I've even heard, heard, t -t 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 <laughs> They make old camouflage siren suits. <laughs> <laughs> to add to that, such is their fame... Quite a number of other things I cannot at the moment name. <laughs> Suffice to say, they're by appointment to H.M. the Queen. <laughs> Which, let's be honest, is about as high as we have been. And speaking now of height, he said, which we were not but then, <laughs> we are in this line, and since I am rhyming it, I'll say when. I'm a load of rubbish. Who said that? <laughs> it wasn't me. There's that little fellow over there, just behind thee. Nay, nay, <laughs> nay, nay again, and thrice nay. Nay, I cried. But one thing puzzles me, he said. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth was open wide. I stood entranced as on he spoke, on subject after theme, and all the day passed in a trice, and I fell into a dream. <laughs> Inside this dream, I walked along and down a country lane, and up there came a maiden, and she said her name was Jane. Boom, boom. Jane said, Who are you, fellow? I said, But a rambler, I. She... I was quite relieved when I awoke um, at the sound of Reveli. It <laughs> <laughs> was Catterick Camp. I did my stint those many years ago. And there we all had holsters, as you probably well know. <laughs> One firm of holsterers I met, you may have heard of once, were those who put their holsters on the back of and the fronts. <laughs> and, the, the front, and the front of ladies fair 
and ladies foul, and ladies <laughs> young and old, of ladies shy, and ladies bright, and ladies good as gold, and ladies tall and ladies thin, and ladies slender too, and ladies who were fat as tents. One could use the word immense. <laughs> there they went, both hither and thence, <laughs> doing the things that ladies do, cocking snooks at the wandering Jew. Who <laughs> 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 finds this sort of thing in quite appalling taste? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I asked the man who'd made the holsters on this lady's back why he had slung them quite so high, and thus he answered back. You've heard of... Oh, no, this is good, this. This is class stuff, stuff, this. You know. You know, you know the girl has urgent need from time to time of pistols. <laughs> and I can't strap them on the front because she's got... And that's an artistic <laughs> conclusion, if ever I heard one. <laughs> and that brings the score to rather an interesting point, because uh, John and Willie have got three, and Graham and Barry have got twelve. Lucky them. Now, now, I'm going to ask each of you to take part in a round which is called Censored Songs. Uh -huh. Each got to sing a song, and during the song, it'll be your task to censor, by means of a buzzer, any words which you yourselves consider will outrage public decency or frighten the horses. <laughs> so, teams, your chance to be Mary Whitehouse for a night. And we'll start oh, with John oh, Junkin. Oh, oh. And your song is Green Sleeves. <laughs> Alas, my love, you <laughs> me wrong to me off discourteously and I have <laughs> you oh so well delighting in your <laughs> green sleeves was all my <laughs> green sleeves was my <laughs> green sleeves was my <laughs> of and who but my lady green? Right now, Barry Cryer, your song is Tom Dooley. I are on the mountain, and there I took her. I her on the mountain and stuck her with my Hang down your Tom Dooley Hang down your and Hang down your Tom Dooley Poor boy, you're bound to Thank you. On to Willie Rushton now, and Willie, your song is After the Ball. <laughs> After the <laughs> is over. After the break of <laughs> After the dancers. <laughs> After the <laughs> are gone. Oh, many a <laughs> is aching. <laughs> Good the more many the that have vanished after the And that leaves Graham Garden and your song Graham is all through the night.
exhausting. Oh. Well, that brings the scores back to Barry and Graham 12 and uh, John and Willie 3. We have a game now <coughs> called Postman's Knock. The aim of this round is to create alternatives to the well-known parlour game of Postman's Knock. One team knocks and the other asks what the game is and how you play it. For example, Dustman's, Dustman's Knock is played like Postman's Knock, only filthier. Well, I, give, I give points for wit or failing that charity and you have the first knock, Barry Cryer. What variation of Postman's Knock would you like to play? I'd like to play... <laughs> oh, I would like to play... No, I'll finish the sentence. I'd like to play Boozer's Knock. How do you play Boozer's Knock? Well, somebody goes out of the room and you have to guess who it is. <laughs> Stop there to climax. That's what I always say. <laughs> right, John, what about yours? I would like to play the 1975 version of Postman's Knock. Pray tell us, what is the 1975 version of Postman's Knock? You go outside and the girl turns up at the wrong address. <laughs> oh. And then go on to another end of <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, there's still hope. Anybody got any more? You want I've to just thought of another one, actually. Barry. I would like to play War Office Knock. And you play War Office Knock. You all go into an office and... <laughs> Oh, in that case... <laughs> in that case, I would like to play, play Surgeon's Knock. Tell us something of this Surgeon's Knock. You go outside with the girl and stay there till she says cut it out. <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, any advance on that? No. no. Yes, right. heady with delight, oh. I would like to play <laughs> Anti-German Knock. Pray tell us, balding person. <laughs> <laughs> This anti-German's knock. Well, Herr Suthof, you play anti-German knock, you go outside and kiss the girl, but no hands. Oh. I wouldn't like to go on to that. I'd like to go back to surgeon's knock. <laughs> right, well, I'd like to go on to the next round. So you shall. In fact, which is opera. And it's, uh, as the name implies, this is a musical round. And uh, I want the teams to sing a snatch of grand opera from a selected passage, accompanied by Colin Sell, of course, at the piano. And I'm going to give to Graham and Barry now a passage which comes from the horoscope in today's morning paper. Graham. Thank you. Introduction from Colin Sell. <laughs> Aquarius, January the 21st to February the 19th. A work you do today will turn out to be a Prepared for someone wanting to back out of an arrangement you planned on. I will, I will, I will. Better say than sorry. Oh. And furthermore, communication may be difficult. Difficult, 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 difficult. <laughs> I mustn't laugh, because I'm in it, <laughs> generally. But despite all this, you'll enjoy your day. Pisces! Oh, I haven't had a drop. <laughs> February 20th to March 20th. Not a good day for shipping. Oh, sorry, shopping. <laughs> Wide range forecast. <laughs> or really for laying out cash in any direction. Avoid our purchase agreements or lending to relatives and friends. In working or home life, teamwork efforts will be hard, will be hard, will, will be, be hard, hard, will be hard. Going. Go I think we'd like to concede that round. Yes, <laughs> surrender. 
Well, I must admit, it was, it was rather moving. Now, uh, John and Willie, uh, we've taken your words, operatic words, from a section on foot blows from a manual on self-defence. <laughs> Colin? Well, it's the old foot blows again. We'll be with you in a moment. Keep playing among yourself. <laughs> This kick is delivered, delivered with the ball. The ball of the foot. The ball of the foot. If you are barefoot or wearing soft shoes. If you are barefoot in soft shoes. The kick is delivered with a short snappy action. Ah, ah, oh, oh, the ah, 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 Especially the contralto. A kick delivered with the bottom. The bottom of the foot, the bottom of the foot is made with smashing action. Smashing action. The best target is the knee. Next is Mr. Shin. Amen. That's it. <laughs> Well, uh, in previous series on this, uh, in, in this game, we've had uh, complaints from listeners asking me, would I please give a serious score? So we'll say that the score is 382 each, and that's about as <laughs> serious as I can get after that round. <laughs> and we come to the point in the programme where I put on the headphones and tune in to a rival channel so that I can miss your <laughs> announcements of the arrivals of the Fairyland Ball. Who's going to open the bidding? Could I ask for a welcome for... Mr. and Mrs. Wonderland and their son, Alison Wonderland. Oh, oh. <laughs> clever stuff. No. <laughs> Contain yourselves within the fairy rings for the <laughs> Peropiskis and their daughter, Paul Peropiski. <laughs> <laughs> She's not standing well. <laughs> Mr. Be and upstanding. Mrs. Co- Sorry, Be upstanding John. from your toadstools for Mr. and Mrs. Weiser Toilet. And their daughter, Witch. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, please? Mr. and Mrs. Wins, light to moderate. <laughs> <laughs> and their elfin friend, Fairy Abel, Wins, light to moderate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Cohen and their daughter, Lepra Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> and all the way from France. Oh, yeah. Will you welcome, please? Camp. Pierre, the cross channel fairy. <laughs> <laughs> the Grot and the shadow of his former self, Alfin Grot. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Elf tender their apologies and send their only son, by Miss. By Miss Elf, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Belli Lai and their daughter, please, their daughter. With a mouth like a heifer. Ina, cow's lips, bell I lie. <laughs> oh. I points, see. Points. don't like the obvious stuff, huh? <laughs> Careful with your wands, body. <laughs> coast veins with their limping daughter, the bad fairy coast veins. <laughs> uh, a party of three, Mr. Alvin Stardust. Mr. Gary Glitter and Mr. David Bowie, who swears he's a member. I don't know what that means, but I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> could, you, could you stand well back for the entrance of Mr. and Mrs. Ambar and their son, Wizard Ambar? <laughs> Wizard Ambar, that's what you always ask when you go to a party. <laughs> Wizard oh. Prepare to be w- bewitched. And we bitched. <laughs> <laughs> By the arrival of Mr. and Mrs. Leaf and their medical son, Doc Leaf, <laughs> of the National Elf Service. Oh. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lynn and their three sons, Grem, Gob, and Hobgob. <laughs> <laughs> and again, all the way from France. Not again. Mr. and Mrs. Gnome and their son, the hero of the French underground, Metro. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, 
I come in to tell you that... Mr. and Mrs. Lated and their drunken son, Pixie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is where I come in again to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the final score this week, barring any further intervention... Mr. and Mrs. Geist and their son, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, that's... Score at this point as... Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Upjohn. <laughs> and their eldest son, who they're very worried about, the Fairy Queen. <laughs> Subtle stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Live now under the blossom that hangs on the bough. <laughs> and their daughter, who was christened by a vicar who stuttered for part of the time. Mary Lee, Mary Lee, Sheila lives now under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Oh, <laughs> Winner. Oh, winner. game That's doesn't what, matter, I think. As you say, Barry, the winner it puts uh, Graham Garden and uh, Barry Cryer in the lead at the end of tonight's programme. But don't worry, fans, because next week Willie and John will win. So <laughs> we'll see you again then. So until then, from all of us, goodbye. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, John Junkin and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you and hello again and welcome to what's called a panel game because no one's yet come up with an alternative definition that's broadcastable. <laughs> we have two teams taking part. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my right, John Junkin and William Rushton. <laughs> and we go into the, immediately into the first round which uh, takes as its starting point the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. And I want to hear from the teams the resulting titles, and I'll award points for anything approaching humour. <laughs> Graham Garden, will you start? Ah, right. This is a film that's been remade out of uh, Half a Sixpence, The Dirty Dozen, and The Exorcist. And it's half a dozen eggs. <laughs> Right, John Junkin. Ah, uh, this is a film which is a union between Rob Roy and the Leather Boys, and it's called Jockstrap. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, how about yours? Stand back for a blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> made from the films of latter years, Lord of the Flies. And Flash Gordon. <laughs> and the new film is entitled, Would You Mind Accompanying Me to the Station? <laughs> and this is where I introduce the round that's played at the end of the programme in order to give the teams time to think of the silly names for people arriving this week at the Housewives Ball. The Housewives Ball. Got that, teams? Yes. Right. We go on to the next round, which is called Sound Charades. One team has to make noises and the other team must guess what they mean. <laughs> it's been my impression they've been doing that up to now, but still. The audience <laughs> are let into the secret and can help by applauding when they think they're getting warmer and doing the other thing when they're not. I'm not going to read that again because it didn't make any sense the first time and it's unlikely to do the second time. But anyway, those of you who are listening at home uh, had better both uh, pay strict attention now because a mystery <laughs> voice will tell you what the particular uh, subject is. And the first team 
to give their subject will be Barry and Graham. Oh. Barry and Graham charade is Harvey. Harvey. I'm going to ask, before the others try and guess your subject, I'm going to go ask whether it's a, 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 a book or a play or a film or a television series or what. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Right. It's a play and a film and a play. Indeed, yes. Right, will you do your charade, please? Uh, uh, who, who's that? Uh, who's that fellow over there with his two fingers in the air? That was either his James Stewart or his Vera Lynn impression. <laughs> <laughs> we all made again, don't know why. Oh, you guessed it. <laughs> yes, and a horse. It's, it's somebody riding a horse, riding past either a very rude gentleman or Winston Churchill. Is there a play yourself. called that at all, do you know? No. There isn't? No. Oh. Um, I think we ought to help them by asking how many Does Harvey enter into it? It does. Oh! oh. 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 Well, Harvey entered into it in the nick of time, so that's uh, <laughs> oh. a mark now to Willie Rushton, and we go over to uh, you, John and Willie, and um, meanwhile the audience here will be shown your subject on a board, and listen to those of you at home for the mystery voice. <laughs> Tim and Willie's charade is funny lady, funny lady. Ah, yes. ah. 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 This, this uh, is a film. Um, Miss Blinkinsop. Why don't you come back to my apartment and we'll discuss this in detail over a cocktail? Very well, darling. Ah, <laughs> oh, the, oh, um, the odd couple. No. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell them how many words they're trying to get? Two. Just... Two. The. Is one no. a definite article? No, not usually. The no. indefinite article? No, no, no not at all. Not no, at all. No, no. Yes. no. So it's like... It's an adjective and a noun. Secretary. It's like something, something. Put a time limit on them, Pump. <coughs> Stop making rules. <laughs> ah. Go you do lose, lo you, you lose a point for each half hour. Ah. <laughs> so, ladies up. Was the secretary? No. No, no. Uh, Much of the clue appeared in the fact that that was my deeper voice I employed for Miss Blenkinsop or Fortescue. I played both with equal you skill. Did. Incredible, that. Amazing. Is, uh, Miss I don't think they're going to get it. I don't think we are, actually. No. Uh, Shall we tell them? So. You tell them. You do it so well. Funny lady. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. dear. <laughs> we'll give you another chance uh, to catch up there, Barry and Graham, with uh, another subject. The audience is going to be shown it right now. <laughs> and the mystery voice will tell you at home. And this time, Barry and Graham charade is The Merry Wives of Windsor. The Merry Wives of Windsor. Are they looking for a play, a film, or a what? This time they're looking for a play. A play. Yeah. Yes, I, yes. Play on words. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I've just married Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I've married Prince Charles. <laughs> I've just married him too, my own. I've married him as well. <laughs> so have I. I've just married Prince Charles. <laughs> I've just married Prince Charles. <laughs> 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 Not the bigamist. <laughs> Royal Hunt of the Sun. Air <laughs> ah. yeah, on a shoestring. <laughs> Crown matrimonial. No. no. I'll give you a clue. It's quite difficult. <laughs> um. Was the fact that you were hysterical with glee relevant? No. no. <laughs> I know what it is. Uh, I think I do anyway. The Merry Wives of Windsor. Oh. John Junkin and William Rushton, you have another uh, effort yes, now, Indeed, another we... subject now. And the charade that Tim and Willie will act out is a little night music. A little night music. <laughs> You are looking for a musical play. A um, musical play? Yes, right. we'll be that kind. Are you ready, sir? Right. There's no... 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 Shut up down there!
Apart from a little night music. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Two Very smart houses in one programme, it's <laughs> Very quick, Barry, but not quite quick enough. And, uh, <laughs> <one of> them... <laughs> well, in the lead now. Now, the next round, under the pathetic title of It Has Been Said, is concerned with quotations. I'll give each of you, in turn, an impossibly obscure quotation, and I want you to identify its author and the circumstances under which it was said. John, I'm going to start with you. Are you all set for your quotation? I am, These I are am. all genuine quotations, and you should know them all. John, yours is, cheer up, the worst is yet to come. Cheer up, the worst is yet to come. This was said by an announcer on independent television just before sale of the century. <laughs> well, quite near it. You get your point for that one. Thank you. It was actually said by somebody called Philander Johnson. Who is an announcer on ITV? Yes, exactly. <laughs> As we all know. Barry. He, he was before he said Barry, that. your quotation is coming up now. Yes. I can tell the sex of a seagull 30 yards off. <laughs> George Seagull. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, you get a mark for that because it was, as you realise, brilliant, but... Uh, <laughs> The, the real answer is that well-known ornithological voyeur, Jean Giraudoux. Oh. Mm. Uh, right. Got that down? And we all yes. know about Willie Rushton. Yes. Here's yours. Cats yes. and monkeys, monkeys and cats, all human life is there. Cats and monkeys, monkeys and cats. Um, Beverly Nichols. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or was it King Kong? I was standing so far away and the paper's all <laughs> over. Right, yes. Well, I'll tell you the real one for that, and the reason why you're not going to get a mark ah. is that it was the well-known uh, American uh, novelist Henry James. Yes. Right. He was inside King Kong. He was the creature within King Kong. He wore the King Kong. Get out. He was King Kong. Graham Garden. He and Ivan Novello. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. just gossip, was it? Graham Garden. Well. The winds come to me from the fields of sleep. <laughs> the winds come to me from the fields of sleep. That is actually was said by disgruntled of Kidderminster <laughs> when writing to the local paper complaining about the offensive nature of a nearby farm. Um, in fact, it, it's, uh, it should be the winds come to me from the fields of sheep <laughs> and is to be found in the Oxford Book of Misprints. <laughs> Well, it's, it actually comes from the Oxford Book of English Verse, so that oh, you're that pretty well, well yes. there. Yes. And it was by William Wordsworth. Let's have another round of that. Oh, eh? right. Why not? Right, Why not? right John Edison. Junkin. Yes. Here's another one for you. But lasting joy is the man attend who has a polished female friend. <laughs> <laughs> lasting joy is the man attend who has a polished female friend. This was coined as an advertising slogan by a man called Sidney Slingsby, who just invented woman polish. <laughs> I'll buy well, uh, he was a widow cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, John, you'd like me to give Graham a point for that. <laughs> I'd like to give him a split lip for that. <laughs> It was actually said, uh, written by a very duff poet of some years ago called the Reverend Cornelius Wurr. Barry, yours is coming up now. If you start throwing hedgehogs under me, I shall throw two porcupines under you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, if you start throwing hedgehogs under me, I shall... I shall throw two porcupines under oh, you. Oh, it's very dialectic, that. That is, um... That's mousy tongue. Um, <laughs> we're to friends of Margaret Thatcher hot pot <laughs> supper. I cheated. I remember the exact occasion. That's, well, Thank cheating you or not, applause. you're in the right, within the right power block. It was actually, uh, as you know, Nikita Khrushchev. One and the same. Have you ever seen them together? <laughs> <laughs> Willie, another one for you now. Yes. One is not born a woman, one becomes one. One is not born a woman, one becomes one. Ah... Uh, Short-sighted rabbi. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yes, indeed. Well, it was actually Simone de Beauvoir. Oh, couldn't you think? time, Rabbi. <laughs> 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 Which brings us to Graham, your last uh, quotation, and yours is, Use your frog as though you loved him. <laughs> Use your frog as though you loved him. Yes. That was said by Mr. Nimrod Juncture of Billy Ricky. I think you'll find. Who also asked for 37 other offences to be taken into consideration. <laughs> and his, his real name was, as you probably guessed... Yes. Isaac Walton. Oh, right, no, yes. No, no. That unfortunately puts you in the lead again as we go on to the next round, which is called Pick Up Song for some unknown reason. In this round, I will start you off on a song and then I shall stop on a word in the lyric unless encouragement from the audience uh, forces me to go on to the end of the song. <laughs> anyway, when I stop, a member of the opposing team must then take up that word but sing a different song starting with it. Are you with it? Who starts with Right. We'll start here with Barry Cryer. Oh. And your song, <clears throat> Barry. A song? I'm going to start you off on a song. Oh, I see. You're going to start me off. I'm going to stop on a word of it, and you must pick up that word and start a new song. And I assure you there is a song that starts with this word. I see. Here we go. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. Three right, little girls from friend. school, are we? Yeah, can Gilbert I just tell you, because I forgot to tell you before that, that you must stop on a word in your rendition and it'll be taken up by the other side. Are we? <laughs> are we? We. 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 The red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. Oh, dear, oh, dear. A long. A long, long time. <laughs> From May to September. Excellent. September. No. <laughs> timber. What? Timber. 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 Blue. But timber. Timber. Green bottles. <laughs> timber. Green bottles hanging on the wall. Wall, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Wall meet again. <laughs> Don't go away. But I know. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'm going to cop out. No strings, no connection. No, no, no. a thousand times no. <laughs> that throws no back to you. Oh, no, 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 all right, no. no. No, no way. No, you <laughs> Well, the audience is singing a song. The audience, no to, business like show business, business, like no business, like no business, I know. <laughs> that is no the end strings, of the nose. no connections, no ties to my affections. I'm fancy free and free for anything fancy. No chains can't be broken. No. Where are we now? Broken. No. Broken. Broken. Or... <laughs> ah, it was the first nose. really bad one. Um, if the audience has any suggestions, I'd like to sing them at the top of their voices. When nobody <laughs> needs me. That was written by Graham Garden. Um, no, no, no. Broken. Broken. Broken trees, broken blossoms, yeah. broken You're legs up as you go along. are all the same to me. I mean, I wrote that, that yesterday. Up. Do you want to... There's a challenge. <laughs> Barry, you're being challenged by John Junkin, who says that you made that up. I did make it up. I wrote it yesterday. It is an existing song. Challenge. Sing the rest of it. Challenge Rushton. Cha challenge Rushton, indeed. Yes. Challenge what, what, Willie. What, Go what, on, Broken. You have to start a song. We throw the challenge too late back. Now. Too the gauntlet is in your back face. Broken, oh, that one. Broken Blossoms, what was it? Fell on me or something, you said. That's what, what my time. song? Yes. Oh, no, it's copyright. I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we've come to a natural conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well. do, do you want it, would you like to try another one? I'll start you off with another. I'll, Willie, I'll start you off right. with a song if you like, because I'm, I'm rather getting into this singing business. <laughs> All right? Yes. Once in a while, will you try to give one little? <laughs> little. Little things mean a lot. Little. Little. Little Sir Echo. Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. I'll leave you with hello. Hello. 
The it's how do you do, anyway? But then it's hello, hello. What? No, it's hello, little sir. Echo, how do you I didn't do. know that, so it doesn't count. Hello, hello. 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 To be absolutely fair, hello, we'll give. Hello, lady friend. That's it. Who's the little uh, girly? Girly, girly. One more morning, just as a <laughs> I heard a maiden sing in the valley. Valley. <laughs> valley. Valley. <laughs> Your real name is Sally. <laughs> um, you're not allowing that, are you? I can sure, well, I'll see by your imperturbable face. At this stage in the face. game, I'll allow anything. Yes. Valley, valley, valley. Quit while you're behind. Valley. 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 Can we throw it back at them now? I like throwing it back at them, you know. All right, throw it back at them. Yes, with a valley word. You but you lose we lose out, all valley. ends up if you they do. You lose 35 points for Yes, indeed, valley. I appreciate valley. that, Humphrey. Valley. Valley, 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 valley. Valley, 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 valley. 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 Thank you very much for the thank you. Oh, yes. thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. Much. You're what? much now. Is it me? Yeah. Oh, it's back to me, is it? Much. Much. Again. much. Uh, Give him another tablet. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing off. Much, much. Um, We're getting away with murder. Mm. Much, 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 much in up and down again. No. That's boots. Much. Quite. Oh, ah. yes. well, 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 the audience are community singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, much binding in the marsh. Thank you, audience. Come on. I've got a very good marsh, backing group, marsh. I'll tell you that. No, marsh. Marsh. Oh. Marsh, he's making eyes at me. <laughs> very good. Yes, with that one, Willie, I'm going to award that round you. to you Super. without any further uh, discussion. And we come now to a round which is called Last Episode. And in this round, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. <laughs> and Colin Sell will play the theme music and I shall award points for bad taste. <laughs> We're going to start with Willie Rushton. Willie, I'd like you to do the very final line of The Archers. <laughs> Did they start using B-27s for crop spraying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Graham Garden. Now, we shall tread carefully here. I want you to provide the very final line for that popular long-running series, The Queen's Speech. Oh. <laughs> Boyfriend and I. <laughs> For the tower. Yeah. John Junkin. Uh. Another popular series for you to put the uh, kibosh on with the last line, and that is Desert Island Discs. Well, my guest tonight has chosen eight records by Marcel Marceau. <laughs> Never mind, John, the Radio 3 audience at home will be applauding wildly. <laughs> yeah, but they're listening to Radio 3. <laughs> Hello, Eric and Gladys. <laughs> Barry Cryer. Your series is Ironside. Here we are on the top of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> well, the uh, two teams are absolutely neck and neck as we come into the straight for the last round, which is the one where they announce their arrivals for the Housewives' Ball. I'm open now for suggestions from any of you. Stand back a decent pace for <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wash and I'll Dry. And their son, Hugh, wash and I'll try. <laughs> oh, sharpen, sharpen your apathy, if you will. <laughs> For the not unrelated family, Mr. and Mrs. Chinsink and their son, Kit, 
Chin chin. <laughs> Reveal your chapped knees. <laughs> For Mr. and Mrs. Freezer and their frigid air, DP Freezer. <laughs> And his friend, Rafe Refrigerator. Oh, oh, following in the same chilly mood, will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. The Fridge and their television celebrity son, D. Frost, The Fridge. <laughs> Have some charity for a Hungarian family. Mr. and Mrs. Beds and their daughter, Magda Beds. <laughs> Pray silence for Mr. and Mrs. Swasher and their daughter, D. Swasher. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Davis and their window-cleaning son, Shammy Davis. <laughs> Who? It has been brooded abroad. It has been seen in the company of the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Springfield, Duster Springfield. <laughs> Let us march into the European Economic Community and welcome, as they indeed march in, Herr and Frau Judicious and their son, Hans Arch Judicious. <laughs> but then humour doesn't travel. Also from Germany, will you please welcome Herr Dreyer, Herr Curler, Herr Spray and Herr Nett. <laughs> this is Go Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> With the light of her life, her only son, the veteran crooner, Bing Go Thursdays. <laughs> oh. And a little sympathy, please, for Mr. and Mrs. Floor and their rather loose moral daughter, Scrubber. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Pinney and their ape, Ron. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you the final score. A devout fact. family. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Duster and their clerical son, Father Duster. <laughs> <laughs> On our own, lads, mark your cards. <laughs> Miss <laughs> Anne Thropoid and her eye level gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, at which stage I have to tell you what the final score is. Can you put your hands together, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but hands. also, will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Srapint today, please, Milford? <laughs> and their daughter, Annette Srapint today, please, Milford? All on his own, be kind to him. A lad, never at his best at breakfast, Ronnie Egg. <laughs> That last and the Bacon family, their son, Chris P. Bacon. <laughs> Lord and Lady <laughs> Teapot and their daughter, Lydia. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tacoffee and their trendy son, in Stan Tacoffee. <laughs> That final burst, ladies and gentlemen, brings the score to a situation which I'm sure everybody concerned will find satisfactory. Graham and Barry have actually scored most points, but Willie Rushton and John Junkin have won. <laughs> and we shall continue this gripping serial next week, so goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, John Junkin and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you. Thank you, hello, and welcome to another programme built on that great British principle which was such a success in the Titanic.
I'll uh, introduce the teams to you now. On my left are Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. On my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. Here in after known as Tim and Willie, which is rather sweet. During the. Uh, <laughs> Not to mention next... suggestive. Order, please. During the next half hour, they sort of play games and I kind of keep a score, which uh, this week is going to be judged by the applause of our audience here in the studio, which is recorded on our chronometer. <laughs> the first round we're going to play today is the one that's called It Has Been Said or Ihibus. Uh, it's concerned with quotations, and I'll give each of you in turn an impossibly obscure quotation. I want you to identify its author and the circumstances under which it was said. Barry Cryer, we're starting with you, and here's your quotation. The human knee is a joint and not an entertainment. Oh, too easy, too easy. Um, I was there when this was said, actually, in the wardrobe. Um, <laughs> this was said by <laughs> Kenneth McKellar. <laughs> to a very short television cameraman with a fetish. <laughs> Not funny, but by God, it's true. I can't improve on that. That's five marks. <laughs> Actually, what he's got down here is Percy Hammond, who, as you know... Which is, is Kenneth's other name, as you know, <laughs> yeah. when he's on tour, just for safety's sake. Willie Rushton. Hello, dear. <laughs> I must have women. There is nothing unbends the mind like them. Is that your order quotation? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you mentioned tax. Go ahead, that's the quotation. I must have women. What did you say? <laughs> there is nothing unbends <coughs> the mind like them. Nothing unbends the mind. It was Yuri Geller. Uh, <laughs> in, a, in a pathetic attempt to prove he isn't bent. Uh, <laughs> Well, actually, like his uh, I, uh, the, the answer, in fact, does improve on that, so I'm only going to give you uh, eight. Oh. <laughs> the answer's really unbelievable. John Gay. <laughs> <coughs> Our founder. Comes from, <laughs> comes from the Beggar's Opera. The Beggar's oh, Opera. Well, it might. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't go back very often. <laughs> Graham Carden, here's your quotation. He was a handsome, well-shaped man, very good company, and of a very ready and pleasant, smooth wit. Yes. Uh, he was a handsome, well-shaped man, very good company, a very ready and pleasant, smooth wit. Was said by Lytton Strachey, the biographer, or Strachey Lytton, of Wilde, um, Norman <laughs> Wilde, who was a handsome, well-shaped man. Well-shaped man meaning he had a sort of pointed head and a handle with a bucket on his head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you had a certain amount of help in that one, so yeah. we'll give you two and a half. <laughs> two and a half now. for that. The answer, of course, which you got very close to, John Aubrey, speaking about Shakespeare. <laughs> Tim well Taylor, short, well. sharp to the point, your quotation. I do love I know not what. Sometimes this and sometimes that. Your private life is your own concern. <laughs> I do love, I know not what, sometimes this and sometimes that. Peter Sellers? Uh, no, that, no, this was in fact Casanova's brother, little known brother, Cyril Casanova. <laughs> Casanova, who was extremely short-sighted and used to say, I, I do love, I know not what, sometimes this and sometimes that but mostly that, he went, <laughs> went on to say. And somebody else said it as well, I believe. Uh, presumably I'm right, Humph? Uh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't listening all that attentively, but... Uh... <laughs> if, you said, if you said Robert Herrick, which I think you did... Herring, yes. Yes, you're, you're, completely, you're completely wrong. I knew this. No, right, right. <laughs> For that, I can give you one and a half... <laughs> because it brings the scores to the level and it's <laughs> much easier for me that way. So, right. This is where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme and which everybody is familiar with in order to give the teams time to think of the names for people arriving at the common market ball. The common market ball. And we always invite those of you, for some reason which I've never quite grasped, we invite those of you at home to join in this game. And we never know whether you do or not. <laughs> 
We have a, a Good round luck now to both called of you, Blues. Anyway. The Blues. You all know the rules of this one. Oh. For this round, each team will give the other the topic for a blues, which they must then improvise, accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. And uh, Tim and Willie, will you give to Graham and Barry the subject for a blues, please? No. <laughs> Next round. Four marks for that. <laughs> Willie, would you like to? No, no, you, you would do right. it. Um, <laughs> the public convenience blues. <laughs> but a mind's not racing. <laughs> Sophisticated. this morning I read an interesting piece of news oh yes I did about this town in France who had two conveniences nobody knew which one to choose to choose so they labeled them dams and arms <laughs> <laughs> and they renamed the town to Lou. Oh. At which point Colin Sell enters the game with 12 points. <laughs> Tim and Willie, uh, you're going to sing a blues now, the subjects of which will be given to you by Graham and Barry. Oh, well, we'll keep the cross channel flavour, the uh, Concord blues. <laughs> to change the subject. <coughs> I said, how about a... <laughs> dear? <laughs> and she said, no. And it says on the bottom of the card I've got here, two marks for wit, cleanliness and brevity. So that's two each. And we go on to the round, which is our ad-lib poem. The teams are going to make oh, up a poem. Each same team same. member must keep going until I press the buzzer, which sounds like that, as if you'd never heard <coughs> a buzzer before. And then a member of the opposing team takes over. This goes on until we reach, we're all agreed that we reach, we've reached a, a natural conclusion, which is based on boredom and uh, anything else like that. <laughs> the first line of the poem will be taken up by Willie Rushton this week. <laughs> Sorry. We and I, was, I, I, I have to warn you each week, I forgot last week with disastrous results, but I have to warn you that uh, any rudeness that uh, enters into this is severely penalised. Quite right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. William Rushton, your Resign. opening line of our poem this week. All who saw them were agreed they made a perfect twosome. All who saw them were agreed they made a perfect twosome. Despite the fact that his were large and hers <laughs> certainly gruesome. <laughs> they both wore hats. <laughs> of different shapes. Delightful to the eye. One green, one red, with a tinge of pink. And yet I can't deny, the red one was a comely thing, a joy it was to behold. And yet, when I asked when he'd bought it, he said it was very old. He said he'd bought it before the war, on holiday in France. He bought it, buying trousers and multicoloured pants. <laughs> when I said red and green, I meant... <laughs> what did you mean, Jim? What did you mean? <laughs> A comely pair... That's two comelys. <laughs> ...of buns. 
Dutch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nurse, he's out of bed again. <laughs> the special sort they sell in France. <laughs> Mostly at by nuns. <laughs> one was green and one was red. They wore them on their feet. <laughs> He's in a world of his own. <laughs> on their feet. I have the address of your chemist. On you. On you. <laughs> Most folk refrained from comment when they saw them in the street. But one fine day, I was up the boulevard, this pair did stride. A little child tugged his mother's arm, and this little fellow cried, Yeah, mum! <laughs> <laughs> and all those people there are wearing on their feet, Why, buns, she said, you <laughs> stupid kid. <laughs> and mocked him across the street. <laughs> now that may strike you as unfair. It certainly struck him. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they red and green, he said. It's some peculiar whim, said Mother, with a strangled grunt. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> of course they're green and red. <laughs> I must take you right home at once, and then shall wash your head. I'll wash your legs and wash your arms and wash your hands as well. Careful. I'll... <laughs> I'll wash you, child, from Dr. Doe. It will be bloody hell. <laughs> but you'll be clean, mon garçon, she did cry. To her. Who left the gas on? <laughs> I've lost the meter now. It never comes it. back. How <laughs> pathetic that Graham should lose the meter at that stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We reached an artistic conclusion then. And the scores are now. <laughs> the next round is a new one. <laughs> This is a new round which we haven't played before. Oh. That's why they refer to it here as a new one. And won't again, I promise you. It's called Straight Face. In this round, the aim is not to amuse the audience. Each panellist... <laughs> what is the difference between this and the other round? <laughs> We've got to buy into the final. <laughs> Each panellist, in turn, says a word. And the first one who gets a laugh from the studio audience is disqualified. <laughs> The remaining three continue the game in rotation until only one survives. And to that one, I award a large number of marks. So you've all got something, you've all got something to work for. Cheating, in the form of telling jokes, will be heavily penalised. We're going to start with Graham Garden. You oh. start with the word, and I shall keep an eagle eye on the audience. And one titter... <laughs> Who's running around the audience at right. the moment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool Spanish down, gentlemen. <coughs> Please, ladies right. and gentlemen. Please, One. If you understand our predicament. <coughs> Graham Garden. Brown. Button. <laughs> Tim Tur Taylor, I got a definite titter. Was it? Mm. Made me laugh. Had Will you speak a bit louder, please? Sorry, Hump, I couldn't hear that. You got a titter. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Ring the BMA immediately. Well, of the season. <laughs> We'll start a game with Tim. We'll start a game with Tim. Compose yourselves, audience, because you're a very important part of this game. That's what they said. Decorum, Tim. Suit. Turf. Crematorium. <laughs> and the kinkiest oh, audience... Oh, you use that again. <laughs> <laughs> always gets a laugh. Oh. <laughs> Let's put Willie Rushton out of the game. Yes, yes, How sad. quite right. So we, we now go to Barry Cryer. You start off, please. Sandwich. <laughs> and that's you out. I'm easy. sorry, it's the old sandwich gag. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the way he tells it. Am I out? <laughs> <laughs> it's the bit in the middle that gets them. Uh, so, <laughs> so the ham. <coughs> this... <laughs> 
this is the, the moment of truth. We have uh, a <laughs> face to face confrontation right. between Tim Brooke Taylor and Graham Gard. Not a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, you've been disqualified not only from this game but the next <laughs> three, I tell you. Sorry, sorry. Right now, steady on. Right. Right, we'll start with Graham Garden. Granite. <laughs> what fault? Go Col ahead, I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Collar. Ostracise. Not a crematorium. <laughs> then I win for being most boring. Not, not yet. Oh, right. <laughs> Ostrich. Pulsars. Yeah, you're out, Tim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. First person to say pulsars loses, apparently. I don't understand. So Graham Garden's the winner, and he gets the point. <laughs> and Tim Brooke Taylor's going to start our next round, which is the round which we call Double Feature. This round takes as its starting point the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films have to be remakes of pairs of old films now. And I want to hear from the teams in turn the, the resulting titles, and I shall award... Oh, no, I'm not going to award points this time. It's getting boring. I shall award something else for anything approaching humour. Tim, will you start off with your pair of old films? Yes. This is three films, they've decided. They don't trust themselves with two. Uh, to help the world film industry, which is The Jolson Story with Sparrows Can't Sing and Gone with the Wind. <laughs> this is to be retitled, Earl Jolson Can't Sing with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Cryer. Well, you forced me to tell you that the uh, Chinese film industry and Mr Run Run Shaw have decided to make a new <laughs> blockbuster. They have to do, because they're public. Having seen one film half an hour later, they want to see another one. Uh, they are... <laughs> uh, they've taken the best of King Kong, Hong Kong story, Kung Fu, Gung Ho, um, The Long Day, or Longest Day, um, Sorry, Wrong Number, Terror of the Tongs, Sing You Sinners on a Wing and a Prayer, The Dalton Gang, and Bang Your Dead. And they've called the new film King Kong, Hong Song, Kung Gung, Long Rong Dong, Sing Wing Gang Bang. <laughs> Willie Rushton? Um, they're doing a very cheap remake of the tiring Inferno by rubbing two bits of Pinocchio and Natalie Wood together. <laughs> Graham, that leaves you. I've heard of a, a new starring vehicle for Telly Savalas. They've combined a fine madness with Hedda Gabler and hair and come up with a fine head of hair. <laughs> Well, now we move on to a round which is, I've been told, extremely popular with listeners to radios one, two, <laughs> and three. <laughs> and this is a musical round, and I'm going to ask you to sing a snatch of grand opera from a selected passage accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. And the, the, we're going to start with Graham and Barry, and your passage, <laughs> Graham and Barry, comes from a, an extract from a Victorian cookery book. The section on food for invalids and infants. Yeah. I've got your words here, Russell, Russell, Russell. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Colin. I'll start. Many kinds of fruit may be given to the sick. Grapes are generally welcome. But should not be given in cases where the swallowed pips might cause perforation of the bowel. <laughs> Unless someone will undertake to free the fruit from seeds and pips. From seeds and pips. From seeds and pips. From seeds and pips. And pips and pips and pips to free the fruit from seeds and pips. Seeds and pips, seeds and pips, seeds and pips, 
Seats and pips and to pips and pips. Pip, 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 pip. Here is the news. Right, Tim and Willie, I've got your words here. Yours come from a 1783 manual of weapon drill, and I have to remind our audience that in the 18th century, the letter S was written as an F. <laughs> come on, handle your cartridge, handle your cartridge. Bring your right hand smart. Down to your pouch, down to your pouch, and flapping it hard, flapping it hard. Fees your cartridge. Sorry? Oh, fees your cartridge. Which bring quick to your mouth. Bring quick to your mouth. And bite the top well off. And bite the top well off. Ah! <laughs> Come on, shut your pants. Shut my pen. Shut the pen briskly. Ram down your cartridge. Ram down your cartridge. Ram the cartridge well down the barrel. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Instantly recovering and feasing the rammer backhanded. Turning it. Turning it. Turning it. Yes, let's stop. And, and placing the sore finger, for in the sore finger, cloak down on the button of the rubber of the rubber. Less, less. Less, considerably less. Cheap, right, cheap. that brings us to the last game, which uh -huh. is the one that I always look forward to, because for the next three and a half days, the teams <laughs> will give you their suggestions for the arrivals at the common market ball. Who's going to open the ball? <laughs> First to arrive, ladies and gentlemen, a profound burst of apathy, if you will, for Mr. and Mrs. Ryder and their son, EEC Ryder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Despite your excitement, retain your places, please, at the entry of Mr. and Mrs. Lux Countries and their son, Benny Lux. <laughs> Closely behind them, glimpsed in the lobby, Mr. and Mrs. Fy the Treaty of Rome and their singularly unpopular son, known to us all as Ratty Fy the Treaty of Rome. <laughs> Taisez-vous, s'il vous plaît. For our next well. guests, Mr. and Mrs. Recultural Policy <laughs> and their <laughs> vulgar daughter, Agnes, <laughs> better known perhaps as Common Aggie Recultural Policy. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Buttersbest with their playful son, Ozzy Buttersbest. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ways Not In Your Book and their charming daughter, Nora Ways Not In Your Book. <laughs> I don't understand that one. Will you welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Dumb and their ecclesiastical son, Rev. R.N. Dumb. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. ah. Not to mention Anne Twerp. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you hadn't. Suspend, if you will, your critical faculties. <laughs> <laughs> but mind the dancers. <laughs> As we welcome the arrival of French, Frank, German, Mark and Dutch Gilda. <laughs> oh. And, of course, <laughs> Mr and Mrs Reaches Newlow and their son Sterling Reaches Newlow. <laughs> Tactfully recommends dancing, ladies and gentlemen, at the entry <laughs> of Mr. and Mrs. O. German Pact and their son Frank. <laughs> while, while still in France, will you welcome, please? <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> so do I. Wish I'm I was. leaving now. 
Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Sequa and their daughter, Jenny Sequa? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. What about food prices and their son, Bert? What about food prices? <laughs> <laughs> At which point, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop him. <laughs> I hoped you would stop me, Humphrey. Mr. and Mrs. Saye is better known, perhaps, as <laughs> Pa and Ma. Uh, Herr and Frau Ich Liebe with their son Richard who can be found in the Hamburg phone book under Ich Liebe Dick <laughs> and give him a call in a similar moot will you welcome will you welcome please Herr and Frau und Blitzen <coughs> and their daughter Donna und <laughs> Merci, monsieur. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Thank you, monsieur. At which Mi point the... Mr and Mrs negotiate the terms of entry and their daughter, Rini, negotiate the terms of entry. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, the chronometer having burst into flames... <laughs> It's time to tell you the final score, but nobody told me at the beginning that you're supposed to keep the score vertically and not uh, <laughs> horizontally, so somebody has scored 42,126,570. And, and I'd like to add my congratulations to that and say we'll see you next week. Goodbye now. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs>
Graham, will you put the final line to Blue Peter, please? Well, today on Blue Peter, we're going to see what we can all get up to with a sledgehammer and half a dozen tortoises. <laughs> Uh, Tim Brooktelly, you've got a job on your hands. We want you to put the final line to Star Trek. <laughs> Mr. Spock? <laughs> yes, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> it could be, then. Those ears, I find them curiously attractive. <laughs> And at this point in the programme, I ask you to believe that I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme to give the teams time to think of names for people arriving at the Estate Agents Ball. Have you got that, teams? The Estate Agents Ball. Right. We have to move on now to sound charades. And this is where one team has to make noises and the other team must guess what they mean. <laughs> it's otherwise known as, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. A board will tell the audience... Uh, what, uh, the, what the charade the teams are doing and the misty voice will tell you at home. Graham and Barry's charade is Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. Well, and you have to tell them, first of all, if it's a book, a play, or what it is. Oh, it's a film. It's a film, actually. Mm -hmm. And do your charade now, please. Right, it's sort of um, uh, all of a piece, really, isn't it? It's, How many... uh, in two words. Two words, words, but it's all of a piece. The whole thing. Ah, hello, folks! Hello, folks! I've had a bad leg. Let's all dress up as gypsies. You can't get the wood, you know. Mr. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Seacombe. Mr. Seacombe, I, uh, I, think, I think you ought to have a bath. What, 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 what? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, they ladies, are... gentlemen, and geese. This is Ingmar Bergman's classic wild raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> Goon, goon, no, no. goon gone, no. goon, no. goon, no. goon with the goon. <laughs> that radio gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Seacombe had to have a wash, didn't he? He was uh, Seacombe, 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 Seacombe here, uh, Seacombe, uh, Scarlet Pimpernel, goon, goon Ape washing, shots. gone fishing, gone no, goon, gone. <laughs> Gone. They're awfully near, Graham, aren't they? Yes. Awfully near. <laughs> Can we separate them? Oh, there was a strange, there was a strange film with Anthony Steele before he stiffened up completely. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't remember Harry that. Sundown. <laughs> Harry, Harry Black. <laughs> Harry Black. No. Harry, 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 <laughs> Harry, Curry. No. Harry's getting warmer. Harry, Harry, dirty. No. <laughs> Close. Very good, and it's your turn to do a charade now, and the board's coming on to say what Tim and Willie's charade is, and those of you listening at home will hear the voice tell you. And Tim and Willie's charade is Dear Octopus. Dear Octopus. <laughs> will you yeah. tell Graham and Barry if that's a play or a film or a book or uh, anything? Uh, to our knowledge, it's a play. I don't think there's been a film, has there? No. no. Play. It's a play. 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 What's and it it's... called? <laughs> You don't tell it, it's just spell called, it. It's uh, called, oh, you nearly caught me. No, it's not. It's, it's uh, two words. It's a play, two words, and yeah. we will do a small charade for you um, with both the words sort of in it. Yeah, yeah. Ready, Willie? Really? Yes. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Bristol leg, sir. Um, that leg, please. And that one. Oh, and there's three over there. That, uh, that'd be all, sir? Oh, throw in a couple more. Uh, right, that'll be... Forty-seven pounds thirty-five p. Great power! <laughs> That's uh... That's really told them, isn't it? Well, Moses, it's a giveaway. Dead mm -hmm. giveaway. Chicken. Chicken legs. Calling me chicken. <laughs> Anything to do with? No, obviously not to do with chicken. Due to the lack of hand upon hand. Um, not chicken. It's, it's legs. Uh, oh, legs eleven. Uh, leg, leg. Uh, ah, 
Legs 12. <laughs> I thought it was getting cold, again. getting cold. <clears throat> legs, 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 legs. Legs is obviously... Um, well, yes. It is, isn't it? Of the essence. Yeah. Le a legs. play with legs in it. I don't care what it is. Pajama top. Pajama top. Yeah. You went too far with legs 12, I'll tell you. Ah. Le ah. Is it, is it sort of a pun, the play on words, the legs use of the word legs? Legs 10. No. Legs. legs. No, it's not. That's a Legs clue. nine. Legs aren't on the card. What? Legs are not on the card. No. But they are. For one very good reason. Feature quite large. In the card. They are. <laughs> <laughs> legs, legs. They are germane to the, the Greer. Um, <laughs> legs, legs. Yeah, there's a man who comes in and he ordered how many legs did he order there? Ah, oh, 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 very good oh. question. 35. They had three legs. What? Th th <laughs> We have an audience of enumerates. Will the audience please shout? Uh, 35. Eight. Eight legs. 38 legs? No, he, he ordered eight legs. Eight? Yeah, eight it legs. It cost 47 pounds, 35 new feet. Ah. 47 pounds. <laughs> That's quite a lot. They're no, good at division. That's not the thing. You don't have to divide it. <laughs> That's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, a lot. There's a lot come into it. You don't need to clap the clues. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that gentleman with the lovely laugh would move about a bit. Um, <laughs> Rubbish among your octopids. Octo octopus. Ah, 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 ah. Expensive octopus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But a wit away from dear octopus. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-seven By squid. Quite Smith. obvious. Yeah. I get terrified of silence on radio. <laughs> Quite obvious from the response to that that uh, everybody would like to play another round of those that particular <laughs> charade games. So Graham and Barry, it's your turn to do another charade now. And Graham and Barry's next charade is Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Having looked at the board, Barry, will you tell yes, the opposing I'm... team whether it's a play or a film or what? Uh, to our knowledge, it's uh, just a film. I'm not sure about that. Graham disagrees. Uh, book, thank you very much. Gentleman in the book. front row who, the, who the wins author, the right? coloured television. <laughs> <laughs> See them later. Was it the book of the film or the film of the book, though? Will you please do your... I mean... <coughs> <laughs> How many words? Please do your Four. charade. Four. Yeah. Four? Four. Well, it... Right, here comes the charade, and we're doing them all at once, you know, and it's messing about, it's just the whole thing. Okay. Tell me, Tom, what do you really like? Well, I'm, an, uh, I'm very keen on uh, La Boheme, yes. uh, Manon Lescott, uh, mm. Tosca, the old barber, of course, you know, yes, like the old yes, barber, the old full barber. of goodies, eh? and uh, Ada, I like Ada, Ada. very much Ada. indeed. Ada. Rarely away from the garden, nothing personal, um, and uh, I just wallow in all of it, really. Yeah, I mean, I can't yeah. have enough of it, you know. I mean, Good heavens. Good Lord. I'm going now, eh? I? <laughs> oh, Lord, I thought you were gone. Is that my coat over there? Thank you for that applause. <laughs> A little known film called The Git in the Glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Opera, has that got anything to do with it? Oh, dear, dear. Fan Tom! <laughs> On the opera. And for giving your answer in inverse proportion to the length of time it took them to do their charade, <laughs> I award you 100 points. And it's your turn, Tim and Willie, to, to do a final charade on your side. Here, once again, is the board enabling our audience to applaud. And this time, Tim and Willie's charade is How Green Was My Valley? How Green Was My Valley? And the voice has told you at home. So, uh, will you tell Graham and Barry if it's a play or a film or a book or a what? It's a uh, book, play and film. Uh, I've only seen the film, but that may not be a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a book as well, isn't it? No idea. Oh, that's another clue. And how many words? <laughs> how many uh, words? Got it. Five. Okay. Oh, what, Ho Jeeves, you're looking at... Uh, 
a bit off colour. I've been feeling a little queer, sir. Oh, that would explain it. <laughs> Barry and Graham, will you try and guess the answer to... Does what... Woodhouse have any... Um... No. No, what uh, a pretty idea, though. Hmm. Butler. Thank you. Butler. Um, Butler. Jeeves. Butler, servant. Footman. What the butler saw. Footman, tweeny. It isn't Butler. No. The operative word. No. 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 He's retired now. In these well, five well, words. <laughs> Feeling a little queer got anything to do with it? Anything at all? That's very yes. colour. In a funny sort of way. Yes, it's you're looking a bit off colour. Oh, oh okay. a ripple. Ah. Ah. Does a, a colour feature in the title? Ah, <laughs> uh, the red butler. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the blue. Black. Green. <laughs> ah, green five words. How green was my valet? Yeah. <laughs> And having come to the, other, the end of another series of charades, eight-week series of charades, we come on to another, a new game. Now, in this round, we're going to play a game that's called hide-and-seek. And for this, Willie Rushton is going to hide, and the other panellists will count up to ten, shout coming, and then see if they can find it. <laughs> the audience can help again this time by telling them when they're warm. So you three, start counting. One, two... two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Coming! Three. Ready or not? Ready or not? Ready or not? Here we Ready Willie, wherever you are, will you shout cooey? Cooey. <laughs> there he is. Ah. Ah. Found him. Found him. Oh. That's no set cooey. radio back 30 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you peaked, didn't you? You peaked. <laughs> Only a little bit. Which leaves bit. us absolutely nothing for it but to go on hastily to the next round. Which is the one we call Adlib Poem. Here's another poem coming up. Everybody knows now how this goes. The team make up a poem. Each member must start, uh, must keep going until I press the buzzer, and then you know all that business. And they take over from each other. <laughs> I have to say that we have had a lot of uh, complaints from uh, listeners about the uh, degree of uh, lewdness which has crept into this round over the weeks. In order to help you uh, fall into the pitfalls that I've been describing, I'm going to give you not only the opening line, but the opening line and a half, oh. which should make it easier. And Willie Rush... No, he's not. No. Graham Garden oh. is going to start this one off. Graham, yes, sir. and your line and a half, which you have to complete to get the poem underway, is as follows. A vision of loveliness she was, shaped like an hourglass. <laughs> Fifty-two inches round the chest, <laughs> 52 inches round the chest but the rest of her was a farce <laughs> she had a comely figure some would say and others not personally I found the chest a bit much but I was fairly attached to her bot <laughs> She was a funny lady, a governess of note. <clears throat> when I say governess, I mean a lady who runs the tote. <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> Nurse, I want to go to bed again. <laughs> when I say the tote, that's the place where you bet on horses. <laughs> At race courses, they are found. Oh, yes, I said race courses. <laughs> you bet upon a horse, you see. You place a wager there. On the horse? 
that you most fancy. I say the colour of its hair, the way it looks, the way it sports when wandering round the paddock. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, then again, you might go home and have a nice plate of boiled haddock. <laughs> Now, haddock is a cunning fish, <laughs> as anglers all do know. For if you try and bait your hook with worm or slug or dough and drop it in the briny deep a haddock for to catch... It's good, that, wasn't it? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Wish I'd stayed awake With luck. <laughs> you might catch one or more luck. A batch. Of haddock I am talking of. <laughs> <laughs> in words so strange and puerile. <laughs> don't, hum, don't. <laughs> but haddocks, they're a canny fish to fry or even to stew a while. Stew, stew, or stew even while, stew while. Stew, stew yeah. while y you are waiting for the pan to sizzle. When you fancy a tasty meal. In sunshine or in drizzle. You sit at home, your buds salivate, you think, oh, what a nosh. When it comes to horse racing, haddocks will not wash. <laughs> <laughs> to put your money on a fish, in, say, the National or the Derby. <laughs> you don't remember an actress whose name is Fanny Carby? <laughs> <laughs> no, only incidental, but she doesn't bet on fish. <laughs> Haddock fans will be glad to hear about another dish. <laughs> anyway, that's by, by the way. And back to fishy things. Imagine, imagine you are out at sea. Wearing water wings. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly a swordfish comes and pierces wings <laughs> so fast. You try to swim to shore, fortunately <laughs> clinging to a mast. The mast has come from yonder ship, a <laughs> ship oh, I spy oh. afar. <laughs> but I've just had a thought that did occur a few moments when I stood outside the door ajar. Well, Those who say you can't bet on fish, I beg and plead that you hark. If you can't bet on fish, then how can you explain Haydock Park? <laughs> oh. Yeah, Barry, that makes you the outright, outright winner of that round. And <clears throat> we go on to the blues, where uh, oh, oh. each team will give the other a topic for a blues, which they then improvise, making up the words, especially those of the first line, completely out of their heads. Accompanied by Colin Sell, the piano, who hasn't done much in this round, but don't worry, because the Musicians' Union rate includes danger money and a pension for premature old age. Tim and Willie, you're going to sing first, oh, and therefore, yeah. Graham and Barry, will you give them a, a, a subject? Um, yes. Well, we, we thought it might be quite droll to essay the Telesavallis blues I say it, I say it. Tell us about us. Tell us about us. Will I wake up this morning? Oh! This will come as no surprise to some of you. I woke up this morning <laughs> thinking a blues about boring, balding Tellys of Alice. Oh, that's a hard one. Sing a blues about Grace Kelly. Yeah, yeah. I hope you'll beg my pardon. And during oh, the Grand Prix de Monte Carlo, she said, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look, Prince Rainier, there are Ferraris at the bottom of our garden. <laughs> Yes, very good. <laughs> Graham and Barry, your turn to sing now, and Tim and Willie, you'll give them their topic, please. Ah, uh, yes. 
Je sans frontières. Oui, thank you. Oui. Oh. Je me reviens ce matin et je joue je sans frontières. Encore une fois, bis bis. Je me réveille ce matin et je joue je sans frontières. Oh, oh, oh. And if you can't understand that, I'll get Eddie Waring to translate. I'll get it all that I gotta hang out. Good Tony. heavens, Eddie! <laughs> <laughs> which leaves us uh, with not a moment to spare at the last round, which is where I sit back and enjoy <clears throat> the <laughs> team's various <laughs> suggestions for the late arrivals at the estate agent's ball. Here come the zumpings, <laughs> and they're whopping greats and goth zumping. <laughs> <laughs> Very welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Detached. And their son, Sammy Detached. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jejoining and their son, Gary Jejoining. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. St Cottages and their son, Terry St Cottages. <laughs> with, of course, men with, of course, many possibilities. <laughs> Kindly restrain your contempt. <laughs> oh, Mr. and Mrs. Two Down and their idiot son, Twerp Two Down. <laughs> Hot from Ethiopia, not surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Desirable Residence and their son, Highly Desirable Residence. <laughs> A visitor from the Builders Ball. Right. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bilt and their son, Jerry. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ning Room and their daughter, Di. <laughs> or indeed the Ting Rooms and their daughter, Betsy Ting Room. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sings Out, and their comely daughter, Faye, known to us all as Desirable Sight, Faye Sings Out. <laughs> Silence, please, for Mr. and Mrs. Sitter's Fees That You Always Forget, and their son, Solly Sitter's Fees That You Always Forget. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, in response... Will you also withhold your right of veto? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, Mr. and Mrs. O'Paint will put it right. <laughs> Their son, <laughs> Alec O'Paint, will put it right. Oh. That's the one. In response to despairing glances from the teams, <laughs> the moment when I wind up the programme. Welcome, please, will you? Mr. and Mrs. Property that will suit you perfectly. There's one born every minute. <laughs> and their son, I have a property that will suit you perfectly. <laughs> And also, while you're in the mood, <laughs> which I can see you're not, please raise both your hands and clap Mr. and Mrs. Eel for couple with children and their daughter Ida Eel for couple no. with children. Which point? And will you also welcome a little Mr. and Mrs. Down. Doze and their daughter from the continent, French Win. <laughs> <laughs> In response to despairing glances from the audience, he <laughs> has come for me to wind up the programme this week. We shall see you again next week. So, from all of us, goodbye. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At 
the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome once again to the program, which is famous all the way from Land's End to Land's End. <laughs> Let me uh, introduce the teams right away. On my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my left, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be playing a series of games which defy belief. And we're going to start right away with the first one, which is called Double Feature. This round arises from the parlous state of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films have to be remakes of pairs of old films. And I want to hear the resulting titles from the team, starting with Willie Rushton. Um, I thought a happy marriage of Tom Thumb and She Stoops to Conquer. There's some... <laughs> somebody up there likes me. Uh... <laughs> We thought that, Willie. I thought that. Yeah. Nobody else did. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Totally worldly living. We yeah. must get yeah. taller Grand audiences. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I thought that was very good. Very yes, good excellent. indeed. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Ah. Um, yes, I was uh, thinking of making a movie for the domestic market. Uh, Frankenstein with Vera Cruz. Dracula has risen from the grave and journey's end. And you'll get Frank and Vera from grave's end. <laughs> Too clean, too clean. Yeah. Tim Brooke Taylor. You met Frank and Vera? <laughs> Mine is more of a, a follow-up, immediate follow-up, to Seagulls Over Sorrento, which is entitled, Oh God, It's All Over My Sleeve. <laughs> this, this, in fact, stars <laughs> Al Jolson, <laughs> Walter Pigeon, <laughs> and Sean Canary. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Barry Cryer. What a shock. Um, well, I, <laughs> I envisaged um, composing a film that has the elements of uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Silk Stockings, Robert E. Lee, and Billy the Kid. And I would call the new film Who's a Silly Billy. <laughs> Very good. But on the other hand, I might. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's hurry along to the point of the game where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme and uh, from now on, the teams will be racking their brains, which will explain a lot that's to come, uh, to think of uh, names of people arriving at the Economist's Ball. The Economist's Ball. You still there? Yeah, the Economist's Ball. <laughs> OK, we come to a round called Kim's Game, which is based on the well-known <laughs> parlour game. A number of items will uh, pass along a conveyor belt in front of uh, each team and they have to remember as many of them as possible. The conveyor belt goes for 10 seconds and there are 30 seconds for recollection and the, the recollectors can take home everything that they remember. Oh gosh. So Colin Sell at the piano, who didn't get into that last game, though I did, <laughs> is going to accompany the music of the uh, conveyor belt as we start it now. Right, Graham and Barry, you've had time now what? to study those. If you come out, <laughs> if you come out front now, keep thinking. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, you uh, have ten seconds now to tell um, us how many. Um, or no, you don't. You have thirty seconds to tell us how many objects you remember, starting now. A <laughs> by the hairs on your wrist, Humph. Um, <laughs> a life-size jelly model of Cyril Smith. Yeah, um, there were two of those. Two of those, yes. Two of those. They took up half the conveyor belt, as I remember. Yes. <laughs> there was a cake. There was a cake. There was. A, there was a do-it-yourself royal tournament. Yes. Wasn't that right? Uh, yes. 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 There yes. Was, there uh, was the inflatable. Um... Oh no, we don't mention that. I don't want to. I, I would like to take that home actually, because no. I could never no, explain it. But, uh, <laughs> a Nicholas Parsons doll. Yes. Yes. In the. Wind it up and it. Uh, yes. All over does, the floor. Doesn't it? Yes. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, a conveyor belt. There, there was, was a conveyor, conveyor belt. belt. Yeah. Yes. yes. Did, you see a, did you see a rubber tuning fork? Yes, a rubber tuning fork. Rubber tuning yes. fork. There was. No, there wasn't one there. Oh. 
Okay. Oh. Your ten or thirty seconds is up, whichever is the longer. And uh, you scored quite a remarkable score, and you can take all those things home uh, with you right after the show, with the uh, exception of the jelly model of Cyril Smith, which will be uh. delivered to you by airship. <laughs> Well. <laughs> it's time now for Tim and Willie for your conveyor belt, so are you all set? Yeah. Right. Starting now. <laughs> right. There you are. Now, Tim and Willie, what do you recommend? That, that, that was a 27 foot juddering blur. <laughs> <laughs> A good deal of interference, um, which uh, I would like to take home. <laughs> there was an, uh, an empty fig, I saw. Um, there was oh, oh, a lavatory brush. Or it might have, the lavatory brush might have been Rolf Harris lying down. I couldn't quite, <laughs> quite see from here. An elephant stuffed with umbrellas and only three legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there were t- 20 uh, second-hand Max Bygraves LPs only used once. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Yes, one of those. Yes. yes. Uh, and a Good. duck. Mm. That's all, that's all. Thank you very much. You've had your 25 seconds. And you've and done well. A good well. deal of fun. <laughs> We're going on now to the ad-lib poem. The team's going to make up a poem. Each member must keep going until I press this buzzer. Then a member of the opposite team must take over. This goes on until we reach the natural conclusion or until the studio is cleared. (laughs) I give you the first line. Graham, I'm going to ask you to take up... A drama. I'm going to ask you to take up the opening line, and here it is. It was the best I ever saw from Bristol to Benghazi. Well, the best I ever saw from Bristol to Benghazi. You may not find that easy to believe. Maybe you're just lousy. Not ousy, you know. It's not ousy. Now, lousy is a funny word. The pronunciation's apt. (laughs) Tim. The judge said, I quite agree. And his gavel. He then rapped. The judge... We have not mentioned before this moment, here in time. (laughs) The judge, his name was Justice Once. He he was a friend of mine. (laughs) When I say friend, (laughs) he wasn't close. More an acquaintance, he. (laughs) Yes. In fact, I'd only met him once. He once came round for tea. <laughs> he ate boiled eggs and ham and stew and rhubarb tart as well. Ole. <laughs> <laughs> he said, now have a cup of tea. And your story, please do tell. By the way, would you like tea in my chambers? He said, <laughs> as he was standing up. <laughs> I said, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather have a cup. <laughs> and so the bags they were brought out, and jolly girls were they. <laughs> One whose name was Sybil, and the other, Arthur May. <laughs> A motley pair <laughs> to find around in environs of Lincoln's Inn. <laughs> but then, if you wandered around with a wig on your head, you can't always win. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, the judge and I, we were up before the beak. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, let us say, be honest, is better than being up the creek. <laughs> the magistrate with aspect stern, rebuked us. And he said, Pray, will you, sir, remove that hat or wig from off your head? The judge said, This, sir, is a symbol of my place in law. It's boring, but it's accurate. (laughs) (laughs) My place in law. Um, In law, I've got to try in law now. Um, And come to that, you've won yourself. What uh, what explanation's your? (laughs) The magistrate 
called upon Humph to press the buzzer then. <laughs> ah. oh, yeah. I can take a hint. Right, we go on to the next uh, round now, which uh, I'm not sure whether we ought to leave this one out, actually. This is the one that's called Straight Face, and in this round the aim is not to amuse the audience. Each panellist in turn says a word, and the first one who gets a laugh from the studio audience is disqualified. The remaining three continue the game in rotation until only one survives, and to that one we award the uh, prize for this week. So absolute quiet in the studio, please. And we're going to start this one with Tim Brooke Taylor. Quiet, please. New Ballsbury. <laughs> Cottage. Plinth. Trifle. Rumble. Rhubarb. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> Sorry about that, Quite Tim. You're right. disqualified. That's. Uh... Oh, oh, and we I take it up me. again with Barry. Gusset. <laughs> Right, that leaves Who's two of them. <laughs> Willie Rushton and Graham Garden. Willie. Um, bicycle. Clip. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of coughing in the audience, don't you? <laughs> Abraham's bosom. <laughs> That's two. I know, but Tim's both, <laughs> both Willie Rushton and Graham Garden are disqualified. <laughs> So, uh, Tim Brooke Taylor wins that round. <laughs> we have the round now which is called Tag Wrestling. This one's absolutely riveting, as you probably remember. In this one, I give each team the payoff of a story, a different payoff for each team. And I then start one team off telling a story to work towards their punchline. And whenever I feel like it, I shall press the buzzer, and a member from the opposite team will have to take up their story, making for their punchline. And we'll have, first of all, uh, Graham and Barry, your punchline. If you'd better write it down, because it's a bit complex. All right? I'm a ferret handler, said Craddock. And this stethoscope is booby-trapped. <laughs> and Tim and Willie, do you want your punchline? You'd better have it, I think. With a final tug at his cucumber, Mildred put the bicycle pump back in the wine cooler. <laughs> Right, now, uh, Barry Cryer, have you started your story working towards your punchline? Um, George Craddock woke up at 7.30, as was his wont, and indeed his will, and leapt out of bed and went straight down to see his ferrets. These were his passion. Meeting in the yard, Dr. Grimsdyke, who fortunately reminded him that today was the start of the Tour de France. <laughs> after my ferrets, he said, with a firm hand. He didn't say it with a firm hand, he meant look after ferrets with a firm hand, he stood it through thin lips. And leaping onto his bicycle, he set off for the channel. Remembering to put the bicycle pump on the bicycle so that it came in later. Once across the channel, <laughs> once across the channel, he fell in with his partner. <laughs> Drying himself off. <laughs> Are we talking now about Craddock or Grimsdyke? Uh, Craddock. Craddock is the hero. Right. Yes, who left his ferrets behind. <coughs> no fool he. Craddock threw the bicycle pump far out into the waves. <laughs> where it sank slowly to the bottom, never to be seen again. <laughs> Leaping onto an imminent hovercraft, he made his way home to the ferret farm. <laughs> There he found Dr. Grims, uh, Grimsdyke. Grimsdyke. <laughs> Not that funny, Barry. There he found Dr. Grimsdyke uh, studiously looking after the ferrets. In fact, only one was still alive. Dr. Grimsdyke, he said, depressed I am, condition in. <laughs> this isn't a poem, is it? No. <laughs> Tell me one of your old yarns about <laughs> when you used to um, ride bicycles. <laughs> Oh, in the olden days, said Dr. Grimsdyke, <laughs> helpfully. That would be when I went cycling with Mildred. Yes, that's the one, he said. Well, I cycled over the channel, he said. 
and uh, over the channel we went with this boat and it broke down. And out came a tug. This story was self-evidently so boring <laughs> that Craddock thought, I will kill this man if he doesn't stop this story. So he wrenched the stethoscope from Dr. Grimsdyke's neck. Have a care, he said. I'm a ferret handler, said Craddock. And this... <laughs> Killed him and set off for the channel again. <laughs> Dover Harbour was empty. There was, fortunately, a final tug leaving called the Ashes Cucumber Mildred. <laughs> Actually, it was the ATS Cucumber Mildred. <laughs> Because she'd been in the acts and had a funny way about her, <laughs> which I wouldn't advise you to take on any, even a 14-day tour. So, with, with the final tug, the ashes <laughs> cucumber Mildred, uh, he set off across the channel. Uh, falling in, fortunately, was a man who was by profession a wine cooler. <laughs> who would walk around, heavy red biddy, dropping ice into it, or, I mean, those who know their wine cooling will know. It's a pretty technical experience, but you can. You can cool wine quite quickly if you know your way, and your onions. Onions don't come into it. They came in. <laughs> can I buzz for repetition? No, it's the wrong program, sorry. <laughs> onions not coming into it, he took a flagon of cool wine and set off back for England. There, at the docks at Boulogne, he saw a boat... That's not in the it. HMS Tandler said Craddock and this stethoscope is booby trapped. <laughs> oh, what kind of boat are you? He said. I'm a ferry. Tandler said Craddock and this. You this oh, 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 oh. Wow. Yeah, we'll let him have it. Yeah. Well done, Tim and Willie, and we go on to the next <laughs> round, which is. <laughs> which is called Censored Songs. I'm going to ask each of you to sing a song. I don't know why. And during the song, it'll be your task to censor with your buzzers any word that you think will offend our audience here. And I may tell you that you have a pretty wide range. Graham, you're going to start this one. I'd like you to censor your version of I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. <laughs> Got a lovely bunch of Here they are standing in a row A big one, small one, some and mystery Give them a twist, a flick of the wrist and Oh, the no, no, no Self-praise is no recommendation <laughs> It's a kindness, I think. <laughs> in the long run. To be fair, it was a long run. Tim, will you bring a little uh, innocence back into the programme <laughs> with your song, which is When the Children Are Asleep? Oh, when the children are asleep, we'll sit and... <laughs> the things that every other dad and mother... Children are asleep and lights are low. If I still you the way I you today, you'll pardon my saying. I told you so. <laughs> Barry Cryer, it's impossible for you, get, for you to get into any trouble with this next one. A nice cup of tea. I like a nice in the morning <laughs> to start the day, you see. And in half past eleven, well, my idea of heaven is a nice. I like a nice with my dinner. Willie Rushton, with a certain amount of dread, I ask you to do your own censored version of Thank Heaven for Little Girls. <laughs> I see. Each time I see a little girl, a five or six or seven, oh. I can't resist a joyous urge to... <laughs> Uh, 
can say. Thank heaven. <laughs> for little, for little, get bigger every day. Thank heaven for little. They grow up in the most delightful way. Those little, so helpless and appealing, one day will flash and send you into the ceiling. Thank heaven for little. <laughs> Thank heaven for them all, no matter where, no matter who. Without them, what would little boys do? <laughs> Thank you. This is the point in the programme where I go home now so that I can miss your announcements to the arrivals at the, what did I say, the Economist's Ball. Who's going to start with the late arrivals at the Economist's Ball? <laughs> From Poland, <clears throat> Officer and Mr. Mrs. Krupski and their son, Ben Krupski. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh. All right. Will you please <laughs> give a slightly more risible welcome? To Mr. and Mrs. Tory Wage Freeze and their daughter Mandy Tory Wage Freeze. <laughs> Guests of Mr. Littleton and welcome on the strength of it, Mr. and Mrs. Ray Nance and their stereophonic son, Hi Fi <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome please Mr. and Mrs. Needle Street <laughs> and their son Fred Needle Street and of course his wife, the old lady of Fred Needle Street <laughs> and their funny daughter Bianca England. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ting Pound and their daughter Flo Ting Pound. <laughs> And also a close cousin of hers, Mr. and Mrs. Pound, and their pornographic filmmaker son, known as the Sin King Pound. <laughs> other relatives are the other bad day for their pounds and their son. Oh, another bad day for their pounds. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Exchange, and their strange son, Fairy Exchange. <laughs> And his imp, Orts. <laughs> Why not? Oh. Welcome, please, if only for my bank manager. Mr. and Mrs., we're going to do about your overdraft. <laughs> and there's son, what are we going to do about your overdraft? <laughs> Here are the Frau, a count in a Swiss bank, and their son is known as... The Gnome Bert account in Swiss Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Cost of Living's gone up again. And their lovable TV personality son, Bilodi Cost of Living's gone up again. <laughs> lovable? <laughs> I withdraw my entry. <laughs> Please really welcome Mr. and Mrs. Cum's Policy and their unemployable son, the unworkable Ian Cum's Policy. <laughs> Excellent. And will you welcome also, please, loosen your stays to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Dunn putting my money into shares. And their son, what F.I. Dunn putting my money into shares. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ted Securities and her daughter, Jewel Ted Securities. <laughs> I like that. I like it. Somebody knows her. Will you please, on a hopeful note, welcome Mr. and Mrs. Million Unemployed by Christmas and their son Arthur Million Unemployed. By <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, a poor hump you cannot would... have seen. Go on, William. Oh, sorry. sorry. So it's Mr. No. Mrs. Sparwell <laughs> and their son with the unfortunate speech defect, Wedge Sparwell. <laughs> Roy Jenkins speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dingscale and their crafty, extremely unpopular son, Sly Dingscale. <laughs> Very welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Inbank and their daughter from Dublin, Irish Lynn Inbank. <laughs> we also welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Fund and their cosmopolitan son already, the International Manny Terry Fund. <laughs> no, you won't, I think. <laughs> 
a Greek party who have just visited a recording of the goodies. Will you welcome, all the way from Athens, Mr. and Mrs. Motion Study and their son, Timon Motion Study. <laughs> As well known ragbag, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, and son. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a good point, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Monius and their son, Percy Monius. <laughs> we needed an anticlimax at the time. Right? <laughs> I'm from America, Tex Fiddle. <laughs> this is the wall the and their son, backs to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> And there are the R deficits with their daughter Doll R deficits. <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Mr. Peter Andrew Waii, who's better known perhaps as PA. <laughs> <laughs> well, they always say that you should finish a show leaving them wanting more. <laughs> so this is the point where I tell you the score. Oh, God, the score. Can you come back next week, teams? Because yeah. yeah. I'll tell you then. You're, you're all doing well. And uh, we shall be back with you next week. That's all for this week. So until then, goodbye now. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The program was produced by Simon Brett. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the programme which has been compared for its wit to the government white paper on drainage financing. <laughs> I want you to know, actually, at this point, that I don't have to do this. I've got a day job as a night watchman. <laughs> Let me introduce the teams now. Over there, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and over there, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. They'll be pitting their wits and risking their sanity in a series of ridiculous games for which I must remember this week to award points. First round we're going to do is the one called Last Episode. And in this one, uh, I asked the teams to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. Colin Sell will play the theme music and I shall award uh, points on this one. And uh, Tim Brooke-Taylor, will you start this one? I want you to put the final line to Mission Impossible. No, I'm sorry, sir. This mission is possible. <laughs> I shall self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> Fine, you Barry. do, and you'll clean the mess up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was going to be a clean show. <laughs> I'm very tired. I've got a bad leg. Barry Cryer, will yeah. you put a, a, an end to the sky at night, please? Not in one line. And tonight, tonight, and I'm looking at this new planet everybody's talking about, called uh, uh, Nickers. I'm looking through this, this telescope, and it's getting nearer, near the Earth, near the Earth. I'm sure all you at home are watching in, in your telescopes. It's coming nearer and nearer, and it, I, I'm looking with the naked eye now. It's getting awfully big and red, awfully big and red, and good heavens, I could swear it was in, in my room. It is. It is. Good God. <laughs> Thank you. Willie Rushton, will you administer the coup de grace to Thunderbirds? Brain says it's terminal Dutch elm disease. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just highly strung. <laughs> oh. And finally, Graham Garden. And in this one, by special request of several hundred people who couldn't be here tonight, Barry Cryer is going to do the theme tune. And Graham, your show to finish off is Top of the Pops. <laughs> Hi there, guys and girls. Oh. <laughs> about that then? And as it happens, 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 <laughs> happens. <laughs> Level pegging. Uh, this is the moment where I <coughs> tell you the, the, of the round that we're going to finish with when I'm going to ask the teams, and they'll be thinking from now on. I'm going to ask them to announce the names of late arrivals at the anatomist's ball. <laughs> the anatomist's ball. Now, here's our quotations round that we call It Has Been Said. And in this one, uh, I give each of you in turn an impossibly obscure quotation, and I want you to identify its author and the circumstances under which it was said. Hello. Graham Garden. Hello. Here's your quotation. Mother, the still sow eats up all the draft. Um, I... Mother of the Still Sow eats up all the draft was said originally by Agent XK009 in Red Square, Moscow. It's, it's code, of course. <laughs> to his contact. Uh, the contact was supposed to reply, will you accompany me to the station? <laughs> Unfortunately, the agent approached a secret policeman who said, will you accompany me to the station? And that's the last that was ever heard of it. Thank goodness, yes. Ben Johnson said that. <laughs> and his name was Ben Johnson. Right. <laughs> Too much. No. Tim Brook <coughs> Taylor, here's another one for you. And that yours is, it's very odd that sailor men should talk so very queer. <laughs> Don't talk shop. Um... <laughs> I was there when this was said, actually. Um, we were all there when this was said. <laughs> it's very odd that sailor men should talk so very quick. Larry Grayson said it. Oh, well, you'll not quite back it was, one day it was, too, I'm sure. It was, in fact, Larry Inglesby. It comes from the Inglesby Legends from uh, one called Misadventures at Margate. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, here's your quotation. He had no little handkerchief to wipe his little nose. Yeah. The long arm of coincidence strikes again. <laughs> I don't know how you find these out, Humph. You must have researchers roaming about. Um, I'm sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen. I've just got to fill you in. Uh, you see what I mean? Um, my wife and I uh, took our little son, who's now uh, 20 months, just under two years old, to Regent's Park Zoo about 10 days ago, and I don't know who heard me say this, and we showed him around. It's a big thrill, because, you know, he's a toddler and he can walk, and in the middle of the day, it, you know, it's been good up till then, and it started to rain, and <laughs> the penguins weren't there. <laughs> That's what he wanted, the penguins. He said, Dad, show me the penguins, and they weren't there, so I smoothed out with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not funny! <laughs> One of the chips bit him, but he... <laughs> he fell in the polar bear enclosure and cut his knee, and... <laughs> I said, I'm sorry about this. I said to my wife at the end of the day, we call him over, his knee was bleeding. And he said, I never saw the penguins, Dad. And, and, and I said, I failed you, son. And he put his arms round me. And, 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 Bottle, I'll do it, Tim. I'll, I'll tell you since you asked him, you swine. And I said, do you realise, in spite of all that's happened today, in addition, he had no little handkerchief to wipe his little nose. <laughs> Oh, great series, great I'm series. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Willie Rushton, here's one, and I must ask you to be very careful before you answer this. I shall, I shall. Watch. Your quotation is, Humph yourself. 
<laughs> and the camel humped himself. Humped himself, and the camel humped himself. And the next lines I recall, which accounts for the hump of the camel and the sphinx's inscrutable smile. <laughs> uh, it's the one-eyed Arabian entertainer, Omar Khayyam Jr. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> who was I known know that to his one. Clothes. Do you? Yeah. Tell me then, tell me. You know, sit there, looking. Is that fellow that Kipples? Kipples, Kipples is right, yes. <laughs> You're expecting an extra mark for that, I suppose, <laughs> having volunteered the If I said it, would we get more? If I said Kipling? He's bigger than You Kipling. said Kipling. I well, say I'll give you two extra Kipling. marks. I sound like Kipling when I say it. <laughs> sound charades we go on to now, and we know all about this one. One team has to make noises, and the other team must guess what they mean. The audience uh, can help by applauding when they're getting warmer. And I say every week that they can do the other thing when they're not, but nobody seems to want to do the other thing, it, not in here at any rate. So we'll continue with the... Uh, charade acted first by Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton and uh, somebody with a board is showing our audience here and somebody with a voice is telling you at home Tim and Willie's charade is the man who loved cat dancing the man who loved cat dancing right Tim and Willie Good is evening. yours a play a book a film or what it's a film 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 and it's got six words Oh, six. Yes. Meow, 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 and it's six words with a definite article lurking, probably, at the beginning, I'm only guessing. I'm going to have a wild stab at this one. <laughs> Pass me a knife. <laughs> um, cat killer. Is it the man who liked cat dancing? No. Oh. No, 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 no. Is no, it? it's not. Oh. <laughs> Sarah Miles. But you're very warm. Sarah Miles. It's away. the man who loved... Ah. Ah. It's Cat Baloo, but we cheated about the number of letters. <laughs> <laughs> right, Graham and Barry, it's your, time to do a, your turn to do a charade now. And once again, the board will come around showing our audience, and the voice will tell you at home. And Barry and Graham's charade is Billy Liar. Billy Liar. Uh, this um, has been uh, a book, a play, a film, television series... Uh, well, we'll leave it at that. Yes, the thinking of doing it next year is a Chinese meal, actually. But <laughs> it's been everything, this. Everything. How right. many words? Um, uh, two. 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 And it goes something like this. Hello, William. Uh, no, my name's Peter. Billy Liar. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Well done, Tim Brookhaven. Brilliant. I... Tim, for that, you get a special chance to do another charade now. And Tim and Willie's next charade is Let's Get Laid. Let's Get Laid. <laughs> it's, it's quite difficult to actually describe what this is. It's a, it's a show. And it's got... Um, Three words, and we're going to do it all at once. Okay? Yes. Let's get it over then. After you, old egg. Oh, uh, no, after you, egg. All right. Geronimo! <laughs> Billy Liar? <laughs> oh, you guessed. Oh, old leg and egg. Old leg and egg. Just like saying that. Oh, leg and egg. So, <laughs> oh, leg and egg. Let's get it over with. Geronimo wasn't relevant, was it, really? Yeah. That was just an that explanation was, that of was ecstasy, a red wasn't it? Actually, it was a red Indian, but it was a red, red, red Indian herring. Oh, is herring. there an, <laughs> a red Indian connotation? Yeah. None. Oh. Parachuting connotation. Jumping from a great height connotation. You no, I think that was just an explanation of... Exclamation, I should say, of ecstasy. Falling wasn't? from a height, yes, but not a falling great height. Falling from a height. An egg falling from a height. An egg. As in Humpty Dumpty. That wonderful musical Splat. Why you were you were close with Billy Leia. (laughs) (laughs) 
The yokes who live on the hill. No, no. <laughs> uh, not the exorcist. Oh. Well, good guess. It's not actually three words, but good guess. <laughs> Eggs Is over... It? Troubled water. No. Why, of course. <laughs> What's the first thing that happens to eggs? Laid. Cracked. Laid. Oh. Lady. No. Lay. Let's get laid. <laughs> Never heard you lost, of that. You Never. lost 12 marks in time faults there. No, you would have no. scored more if you hadn't got the answer. <laughs> You're going to do the charade now, Barry and Graham. And once again, the board comes round. <laughs> And Barry and Graham's charade is The Nun's Story. The Nun's Story. And you at home have been told what they're going to do. Now, Barry and Graham, what is it? A book, it's, a film it, or it's a book and a film. A book and a film. Yes, and it's three letters. Three words, I mean. Sorry about that. <laughs> right, here's the charade. We're doing it all at once. Remember that? It's three words and it's a book and a film. Mm. And impossible to guess. Uh, that's that's a old, clue. Uh, yeah. I say, old boy, do you know uh, Sister Teresa? Yes, yes. Uh, well, when I say no, well, when I say no, I... Uh, the government. Yes. You know the last election? Yes, yes, yes. She voted Conservative. No. Yes. I'd never have believed it. She did. Good gracious me. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All credits paid, final caption. OK, Tim and Willie. I didn't hear that. No, I didn't either. I missed all that. Was it St. Teresa? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Sister, oh, Sister, Sister Teresa. Sister Teresa. Ah, None. Yeah. Does that... Yeah. <laughs> None in elections. Uh, blue Nun. J.B.'s having a blue nun. Um, <laughs> the blue nun. Blue nun. No. Blue Nun. Blue. None but the blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the red nun. None but the brave. No. Uh, three words. Uh, yeah. Three words, yes. Book and a film. They haven't guessed it. Oh, the me. nun's Tory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> P.S. I lied to the mummy. <laughs> well, we've reached a crucial point in the game when we go on to our ad lib poem. I'll talk. And I give the one, one member of one team the opening line of a poem. He takes it up from there, and then they go on in rotation until we've all had enough. And Willie Rushton, I'm going to give you the line first of all. This <laughs> time. Goodbye, world. <laughs> Bye, Willie. And your opening line is this. I had a lovely pair of things, but one of them was Julie's. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, world. I had a lovely pair of things. One of them was Julie's. Thank the Lord, my hair is even longer than Tom Dooley's. <laughs> it hangs right down my shapely back. I won't reverse that one. Fancy <laughs> trouble coming. I've also got a beard, <clears throat> which naturists can climb about. Sometimes that's weird. What a strange place for a bandicoot to nest. <laughs> They sometimes say. They marvel that they stare at it, and then they go away. <laughs> One who came back, a naturalist, it is, of whom I speak, came and lived within my beard for, oh, most of a week. And at the end of that one week, he came to this conclusion. He'd buy a television set from that great <laughs> firm, Rediffusion. <laughs> All the other firms are good, I have to say that here. <laughs> In case they complain to our producer, dear. However, the naturalist you're longing for to hear of. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> the buzzer broke. That's got it. That's got oh, it. oh, that's it. Oh, hear, hear of. of was that? Mm -hmm. um, uh, hear of. But this is such a bizarre tale, and such a 
very queer of which I've heard tell much before. He was a chap <laughs> who liked to drink. <laughs> A drink called Camel's Wrist. <laughs> it's not quite like a horse's neck. <laughs> it smacks more of a pink lady. With elements of sidecar. <laughs> and... Uh, pardon? <laughs> And, um, <clears throat> it looks a trifle shady. But once you've had a glass of this, your cares are wont to rise and slip away from off your back and brighten up your eyes. And then you leap into the air with frolicsome exclamations. <laughs> you take a bus at first <laughs> and visit all the stations. <laughs> This is a pastime known by many as fun to be endured. <laughs> Bless you, Tim. Um, you go to Euston and King's Cross, in there you are immured. A lady with a trolley sells cups of tea and buns. You look at her and say, my dear... Oh, my fancy now it runs to thoughts of caviar and cakes. Because <laughs> I've got Catholic tastes. I'm also no stranger to Neesden's icy weight. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm up there drinking with my friend the naturalist... And he starts exploring at my beard. I have a camel's wrist. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we come to the musical uh, round now, which uh, brings back Colin Sell at the piano once again to accompany the teams in their opera singing. And we're going to start this one with you, Graham and Barry. We're going to ask you to sing an extract from the BBC Sound Effects catalogue, Comedy Sounds. Booing and bleating, evil applause, <laughs> half-hearted hurrahs, panic and rush for the exits. <laughs> Running footsteps. And explosions and splashes. Footsteps strolling through ovens. Strolling through ovens. Strolling through ovens. 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 Strolling through ovens. Woodpecker practicing. Typing with three hands. Drawbridge opening sideways. Radiophonic stomach. Standard orgy, cheering small group. Ha! Smoked herring gulls, more or less normal chickens. Indisposed chicken. Ah. Sheep, mother and child, mother and child. Assorted sheep, assorted sheep. Goose goblin. <laughs> Goose gobbling. Puncture. Puncture. P U N C T U R E. Thank you, Graham and Barry. You're going to sing your one now. Uh, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. And yours is, we are going to ask you to sing the ticket for this programme. <laughs> this is the ticket which is issued to the audience here. They can program. join in. They only go when they go out singing the ticket. A BBC. Pip, 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 pip. Complimentary ticket not for sale. Admi 
admit to. Admit to. Admit to. Do I'm sorry I haven't a clue. Chairman Humphrey Little <laughs> Who remembers Cherry Blossom Pink? <laughs> Jim! Jim! Brooke Taylor, William Rushton, William Rushton. Jim! Brooke Taylor, William Rushton, William Rushton. With Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. Up till halfway through, you've got 12 marks for that. <laughs> and that brings us now to the final round, ladies and gentlemen, where I sit back and listen uh, to the teams giving their arrivals at the anatomist's ball. Mr. and Mrs. Bones, and their distinguished relative, Dame Bones. <laughs> <laughs> Who are joined Pop by Mr. and Mrs. Cheered Spleen and her son, Rupert Cheered Spleen. <laughs> Please really welcome Mr. and Mrs. Muscle and their son, Paul Muscle, <laughs> and his friend, Bruce Tendon. <laughs> Good heavens, who's that with them? What a coming together. Some more friends of Mr. Littleton, Mr. and Mrs. Lee Stendon, and their trad clarinet playing son, Acker Lee Stendon. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. E. Button and their daughter, Belle. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Knees and their kid knees. <laughs> please, will you also, oh. please will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Broughton and their tiny criminal son, <laughs> Little Fingers Broughton. <laughs> Welcome from Scotland, Mr. and Mrs. Knee from a slip disc, and their daughter Aggie Knee from a slip disc. <laughs> oh, Ada Noids and Tom Sills. <laughs> oh, and there's Fanny Bone. <laughs> and her uncle joint. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I have to say that. Uh, We've come to the end of our show. There's the bouncer, Big Burtox. <laughs> On his bucking bronco pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, kindly shut up. <laughs> For Mr. and Mrs. And why I must interrupt is that we've overstepped the bounds of decency and also reached the end of the series. And their daughter, Teresa, mm, why I must interrupt, <laughs> because we've overstepped the bounds of these two. Yeah. 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 So the chairman having the last yeah. word, ladies and gentlemen, goodbye from our teams and from me, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs>